Hello everyone, good morning. Hi everyone, good morning. Hola, buen día, bon día, bonjour. Buen día, buenos días. ¿Cómo les va? Good morning from Los Angeles, California, United States. Desde Los Angeles. Planet Earth. Yeah. <laughs> Bonjour. 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 ¿Se va? <laughs> vamos esperando que todos se vayan conectando. Así que hay mucha gente, ¿no? Mucha gente, mucha gente linda. Vamos saludando a todos los que se van conectando. Sí. Desde Perú, desde Brasil, desde Panamá. ¡Qué lindo! Si ven que se nos mueve la mesa es porque apoyamos las manos y bueno, tenemos el, el brazo que sostiene el teléfono enganchado en la mesa. Entonces, sí, mil disculpas eh, por ahí eso. se mueve. Uh -huh. eh, que un poco tiene sentido porque acá hay terremotos, así ya. que así <risa> menos bien. Buenos días, buen día. Bueno, hoy es un día muy especial para la galería, por supuesto, y para los 34 artistas que participan en este Collective Show, en este Salón eh, Colectivo Internacional donde reunimos artistas de Argentina, de Bélgica, de Brasil, de Canadá, de Chile, Cuba, Francia, Holanda, Honduras. La reunión es una isla francesa, México, Panamá, Perú, Taiwán, Trinidad y Tobago, um, UK, Uruguay y United States. I might say that in English too, because we have a lot of English speaking people and also some people that might not speak Spanish, they speak English too. So we have 34 artists. From Argentina, Belgium, Canada, Chile, Cuba, France, Holland, Honduras. The Reunion, which is La Reunion, which is a French protectorate, I guess, in the Pacific, a beautiful island. Mexico, Panama, Peru, Taiwan, Trinidad and Tobago, Tunisia, United Kingdom, Uruguay, and United States. Eh, un día muy especial porque la galería propuso recordar, conmemorar y homenajear a uh -huh. las mujeres que el 8 de marzo de 1911 murieron trágicamente junto a sus esposos también y sus hijos en una eh, recordada eh, tragedia que en sucedió una en una compañía que se llamaba The Waste Shirt Factory uh -huh. que hacían camisas uh, for those speaking English I mean we remember in this day uh, Women's Day among other things because we remember a tragedy a fire that occurred 100 years ago or more Yeah, at the Waste uh, Shirt Factory in New York. Yeah. And he killed Manhattan. a bunch of women that used to work without any women rights or working rights, without fight exit. And they just got, uh, I mean, burned, basically, torched inside fire. Some of them jumped to their death uh, out the window. Uh, there were some of the husbands in the factory, mm -hmm. too, and, and, and their son. Uh, Storytelling from them that uh, some of those people before plunging to the dead, jumping out the window, they kiss and, 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 and they jump together. So it's, it, it was really horrible. And we know that there were no working rights. The working conditions were appalling, yeah. uh, which you know, is, is an understatement. And most of the times uh, that was geared towards women. Women and uh, minorities back then too, I mean. So uh, that's basically what we're trying. The word celebrating is kind of awkward because mm -hmm. there's nothing to celebrate, but exactly. it's, it's, there is a remembrance. Remember. Yeah, yep. there's a remembrance towards that um, for all those women that pave uh, the road for, even if we are still kind of in a uh, shorthanded uh, way of living for women in the world, I mean, they still have paved the world for a much fairer society yeah. for women around the world, and, and they pay with their lives, tragically. Recordarlas y agradecerles que gracias uh -huh. a todas esas mujeres eh, luego se creó el sindicato y por supuesto luego se creó este día para también que las mujeres tengan más derechos y que bueno, todavía seguimos trabajando por eso. Y cuando hablamos de los Estados Unidos, se empezaron las reglas y luego se pagaron las reglas para las mujeres votando en los Estados Unidos. Exacto. Pero sabemos que en muchos países todavía no tienen derechos, no solo las mujeres, sino las minorías, así que usamos... This day, basically, to remember all those who are exploited against their will in, you know, in, the, in the whole world. I mean, yeah. there are so many countries that have no mm -hmm. rights. Yeah. Comenzamos. Eh, queremos comenzar a mostrar las obras de estos 34 artistas y vamos a hablar un poquito también sobre cada uno de los pensamientos y cómo sublimaron a partir de esta convocatoria. Yeah, we're going to start presenting all the works. And we're going to talk about each work a little bit. I mean, mm -hmm. what the artists felt, why the artists uh, 
came up with the idea and how he consolidated or she consolidated the idea yeah. and what's the message behind that idea too. Yeah. In first time, eh, no nos presentamos. Eh, oh, yeah. <laughs> muchos But we artistas, have no names. Yeah, muchos artistas no nos conocen. Yeah. Eh, es la primera vez que exhiben con nosotros. Somos Alejandra Menduña Schneider y Jorge Schneider. Ambos somos los dueños de Menduña Schneider Art Gallery en San Pedro, el Distrito de las Artes de Los Ángeles, California, United States. Uh, yeah, uh, Alejandra, she's my wife. I'm George, the husband, of course. <laughs> and we're human beings. Yeah. Uh, we're originally from Argentina, mm -hmm. but you know we consider ourselves kind of... Uh, American Argentinians. No, citizens. American. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> we, we don't more. agree a lot of times. Yeah, we, we, we're citizens of the world. I mean, yeah. I don't see the world with frontiers or countries. Yeah. I mean, you're born, but you didn't really choose where you're born, even though then you might end up loving your country. But we happen to love the world more. Mm -hmm. So, true. anyway. It's true. Yeah, y también queremos agradecer a muchos artistas, eh, muchas galerías que han apoyado este proyecto. En principio, Alejandra Malvicino, gestora cultural junto a su proyecto Arte Global Malvicino Palermo desde Brasil. A uh, In Gallery, Gravura In Gallery. Galería. In y, Gallery Sao Paulo. Y yeah, Gravura Gallery de Río Grande do Sur. Do Grande do Sur. Y por supuesto también a Mondial Art Academia desde Francia. Canadá en Francia. En Francia. Así que muchísimas gracias a todos ellos. Yeah. Comenzamos. Let's start. Let's start. Esta obra es de un querido artista que ha exhibido muchas veces en la galería y que muy prontamente en agosto va a exhibir con su colectivo desde Perú. Él es de Tacna, Perú. Eh, esta obra se denomina Anciana en Macusaní. Es un óleo en canvas, óleo en canvas. Y esta obra, Mángel, o mejor dicho Miguel Ángel Ayamamaní Luque, la ha realizado viajando en diferentes ciudades de, de su país, de Perú, de su original Perú, y recolecta estas típicas mujeres, eh, muchos las llaman cholas, con sus sombreritos que son típicos en cada región de Perú, son diferentes, pertenecen eh, originalmente al bombín inglés. Eh, Mangel siempre trata de demostrar por medio de su pintura las tradiciones eh, y volviendo otra vez, ¿no? respetando su cultura y estas maravillosas mujeres de su puno. Yeah, I'm gonna say some words in English also for those who don't speak Spanish. Um, Mangel is a very dear artist to us. I mean, we know him yeah. for a long time. Mm -hmm. He's from Peru, he's from Tacna, Peru. Uh, excellent artist. And in this case, this work, what he did is he went out and he ventured in some places in Peru looking for these faces. These are native people from Peru. We're talking about oppressed people. I mean, the native people all over the world, whether it's Australia, whether it's South America, Central America, North America, everywhere, Africa, yeah. where for whatever reason, societies weren't, uh, weren't as strong will to have uh, uh, an, an organized way of defending themselves Uh, through history, they have fallen, you know, in the hands of more powerful nations just because they wanted their natural resources, mm -hmm. and sadly also they wanted their cheap labor, as it happened, you know, yeah. through history with slavery. Um, this this work is an all on canvas, and you can see. I mean, we don't even know the age of this woman, and if you, any one of you who has ever ventured to Peru or Bolivia or northern Chile or Argentina, mm -hmm. and you go see these people, they're ageless because sometimes they're so young and they're so old, and sometimes they're so old and they're so young. They seem to be eternal. Uh, you find it sometimes in Nepal, in India, there are those faces that every single furrow, every single line in their face tells a story. And one of the weirdest things about this, because this is a, a basically native costume, and yet the hat is inspired of the stovepipes hats from England. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's how weird it is. And then when you see the ribbon, every single, uh, uh, what is it? I don't want to say tribe, but every single uh, region where these people yeah. live, they have a different color. I don't know exactly what that resembles or what the color is inspired of, but every single hat is different. And that is where you're from, I don't know, from the west part of, 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 of some uh, the Andes in, in Peru or from the valley. But that's what it is, and uh, it's, it's really happy to see women, and not just what we consider Western women, you know, and that they always put it in a nice poster when, when there is yeah. International Women's Day. I mean, uh, if somebody embraces what it is to be a woman, it's, 
is this lady. It, absolutely. Eh, felicitaciones, mm -hmm. Miguel Ángel, la llama Maní Luque. Una yeah. obra fantástica, sin duda alguna. Seguimos por aquí con Bikel, una obra desde Holanda. Esta obra se llama Women in Ocre, Mujer en Ocre. Es glass y metal, es vidrio y metal. Eh, Bikel, la artista Bikel, eh, que vive en Holanda, es nacida en Curazao. Curazao. Ajá. Ella estudió en Conin Academy, eh, se especializó en vidrio, diseñó y es una eh, artista visual. Y ella cuenta que cada vidrio que ella diseña es único y está certificado, por supuesto. Su trabajo, lo que desea eh, interpretar es la transparencia del color y reflejar lo, lo nativo de Curazao, su ciudad seguramente donde nació. Eh, bueno, Viquel, por supuesto, bienvenida. Muchísimas gracias por sumarte de la mano de Arte Global Malvicino Palermo. I never seen some words in English about Beko. Uh, she's from Curaçao, which is an island next to Venezuela, which is a Dutch protectorate. It's, it's a beautiful island, it's the Caribbean. Yeah. The funny thing is that it's a Caribbean island, but the streets look like Holland. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the row houses and all that. Um, what really uh, hit me about this work is the medium. It's metal and glass. And, you know, I have it, a way of always thinking or overthinking too much, but that's, that's my nature. But, I can't think of a better metal and, 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 and what it says, material, metal and glass, to represent the struggle of women through, through history, because mm -hmm. it represents, you know, the times they've been under uh, the metal of somebody who has punished them, the times they've been cut by glass, which can be a metaphor of suffering, and how everything has been, in a way, recycled to create a beautiful woman of today. So I think it's, it, it, it's appropriate to say that a lot of times the medium, which we don't think about it much, is very important for a work of art, and, and, and this is the case. So mm -hmm. thank you so much, Rico, and we do want to go to Curaçao because you know, <laughs> we love the island and we saw so many videos about the island, it's so close to us that uh, we had to go to Curaçao. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Vikel, um, thanks a lot. And mm -hmm. thank you también, um, para Benza, um, obrigado su arte global al Maldicino Palermo. Okay. Seguimos por acá con Marina Burana. Marina Burana es nacida en Argentina, pero ella es de Taiwán, ella vive en Taiwán, también otra artista que ha exhibido muchas veces con nosotros, uh -huh. una artista muy querida. Muy amiga es, tuya. Muy amiga también. Esta obra eh, no tiene título, es un Oil on Canvas. Y voy a compartir una poesía que Marina eh, escribió especialmente para esta obra que se llama Hundir la Piedra. Atreverse a hundir la piedra. Ver las manos apretadas que escriben sobre el agua, porque es como nace y muere la vida. Novia eterna, transparente, borbollón que sueña pájaros de sal. La hora de la tarde ya se lleva sus cabellos como ríos. Quiero contar un poco también sobre Marina, que ella se especializa en papel. También. Ella ha trabajado papel. y ha, ha, claro, ha trabajado y ha investigado cómo se hace el papel. Bueno, vive en una ciudad maravillosa. El otro día subía una foto... De, de, una, de, de la ciudad donde vive en Taiwán en bicicleta no? No, no lo recuerdo eh, en bicicleta y bueno con, obviamente con toda la, la arquitectura y la geografía del lugar realmente una obra eh, para National Geographic impresionante felicitaciones congratulations and thanks a lot Marina Burana to be part of the International Women's Day and again you can see the flowers and you can see the flowers a metaphor for a woman Uh, there is nothing that represents women more than flowers or nature itself. That's mm -hmm. why Native Americans and everywhere in the world they used to call it Mother Earth. Okay, sorry for the inconvenience. Ah, uh, yeah, so sorry. It's uh, live streaming and sometimes yeah. this happens. Eh, yeah, estábamos con la obra de Marina Burana uh -huh. desde Taiwán. Por aquí seguimos. Hundir la piedra. George, estabas explicando algo en inglés sobre yeah, las flores y la madre tierra. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sorry that you yeah, know, so we, we lost the streaming, but you know that's a force majeure, they call it. I mean, something happened and he lost the internet connection, which shouldn't happen, but it does happen every now and then. Uh, regarding this, this work, what I love about this work is that I can't find any better metaphor for a woman than a flower or nature itself uh, in every single culture, we call it primitive culture, but it's not really primitive, it's culture. We think we know better, but we don't. Uh, it was the Mother Earth. That was the first woman. Yeah. 
And if we go to uh, absolutely to mythology, we can call it Sophia. Mm -hmm. and, and there are so many, but everything started with Mother Earth. And about the poetry that Alejandra read, I don't want to translate it in mm -hmm. no, uh, in a fast way and don't do the right honor to the poetry. But I would like to just note that, for instance, is this La Hora de la Tarde, which is the evening hour, ya se lleva sus cabellos como ríos. It takes away your hair like a river. And in that, we can actually see it as, as a sunset that takes away all the women prior to the women that live today, but they live a river. And all of them swim in the same river. Jorge Luis Borges, the famous Argentinian writer, used to say that one woman is all women. The ones that live before her and the ones that are gonna live in the future. And that's the river, the river of immortality. And the flower is the same way because the flowers, sometimes they wither away, but they come back. They wither away and they come back. So it's Mother Earth recycling itself, like every woman recycling herself in the one that was before and the one that will be after. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um, seguimos por aquí con Nora Caviale. Nora Caviale es una artista argentina, nacida en Rosario. Ella vive en Los Ángeles hace 20 años. Uh -huh. Representa en este momento a Muy amiga State, nuestra también. Muy amiga nuestra, una querida amiga. Que Esta, está exponiendo ahora también. en un museo en Eco Park, que es el, cerca del centro de Los Ángeles, uh -huh. se llama la Galería Neutra. Neutra un... Museum and Gallery. Claro. Felicitaciones. Y está, en realidad Nora está exponiendo en todas partes del mundo. Está exponiendo en Nepal, en, Nepal, Nepal. en México, sí. en Venezuela. Así que, congratulations, felicitaciones Nora por tu carrera tan importante también que estás construyendo como mereces. Como pronto todos se mereces. va con Elon Musk a Marte también, Sí, ¿no? también. Ah. Yo creo que pronto la, la obra de Nora va a ser una exposición Galáctica, individual. ¿ves? The first individual show in Marte, Nora Caviano. Nora Caviano. <ríe> Nora, esta obra realizada en Purim sobre tela se llama Simón de Beauvoir. Mujer no se hace, no se nace, se hace. Uh -huh. eh, es una mix media, como les contaba, es Purim y después, por supuesto, Nora le da su toque especial. Explica un poquito del Purim, así la el gente Purim, sabe cómo lo hace. Bueno, el Purim es... Eh, los colores son maravillosos. Claro, una ah. mezcla de, en este caso, acrílicos, ¿sí? Que se trabajan con un medio especial. Uh -huh. Entonces, luego se derrama, como bien dice el Purim, se derrama sobre la tela y de a poco van naciendo como si fueran células, gotas, formas abstractas totalmente eh, diferentes unas de otras. Por eso cada trabajo del Purim es único. Ahora bien, Nora lo que realiza después cuando este Purim, esta pintura se secó, es mirar más allá de esa obra abstracta en primer lugar y ve una imagen, siempre encuentra una imagen significativa y en este caso... Ella vio a esta mujer, a veces ve animales, uh -huh. a veces ve gotas, a veces ve tramas. Bueno, eh, siempre es un mundo único y diferente. El que Nora ve más allá de lo, los ojos, lo esencial es invisible a los ojos. Antoine es un ex Nora Caviale, I'm going to say some things in English about her. So, this, this work is called Simone de Beauvoir. Uh, I hope you guys read Simone de Beauvoir, uh -huh. uh, The Ethics of Ambiguity, and so many other things. She's not my favorite. Philosopher. My, <laughs> my two favorite philosophers when it comes to women are Hannah Arendt mm -hmm. and Susan Sontag. Yeah. But I think that she had one of the best phrases ever, which was, you know, uh, you are not born a woman, you become a woman. And I think people have misread that phrase a lot of times. Uh, uh, take whatever I say with a grain of salt because I can be wrong too. But uh, uh, Alejandra and I believe Uh, very strongly in speaking your mind, whatever you're right or wrong, and, and no censorship at all. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I, that I see in this phrase is that what Simone de Beauvoir saw is that the first thing that is born is life. Life is not a woman, a man, a flower, uh, a river, it's life. Mm -hmm. And then you become a woman. That's why when, when a baby is born, we call it a female or a male. Female or male is gender. Gender doesn't really exist exist in the, in, in the sense of what biologically is, but then you grow up to be a woman in the sense that you blossom in who you are. The same thing with a man. There are males who are no men because they have never really developed. No, they, 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 they just wither away with atrophy. So that's what I really like about that phrase that is about life. And what I love about Nora in this work, and, and this is one thing that 
it, it always hits me about Nora Gabriel is that she reverses the work of the artist. The sculpture works from the drawing to the sculpture. Nora Gabriel works from colors and putting, and then she, with the brush, she chisels the canvas and finds the shape of a woman, which is opposite to everybody else. Everybody kind of draws something and then paints or paints a la prima. She just makes a mess out of everything and then looks into it and finds that. It's like the sculpture, you know, that looks at a piece of marble and you see just a rectangle and the guy says, the, the David, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know. So that's uh, what's so remarkable about her. And that's why the name is so appropriate. You know, this, this painting was just born, but then it became a woman when she saw it. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, yeah amazing. Uh, seguimos por aquí mm -hmm. con la obra de Margot Calderero, Calderero Lenain, o Lenain. Mm -hmm. eh, ella es de Francia. Lenain. 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 Bonjour, <laughs> if you don't. Bonjour, Margot. Ella es de Francia, como les mm -hmm. contaba. La obra se denomina Darro, Zambal o Elec. Es una mix media on canvas. Mm -hmm. Y cuenta, contaba Margot en, en su artist statement que todas las mañanas, justo después del desayuno, Esri prepara los chiles con sus propias manos. Y en la obra podemos ver cómo ella los rompe, con dos pedazos a menudo hace una pasta. Darro, como lo llaman en Metaguay, esto es en Indonesia, uh -huh. es conocido como el zambal o el ek, en la mayoría de los países del sudeste asiático. Y es una salsa de chile picante, hecha de rojo picante, chiles y vinagre. Bueno, esto tiene que ver también con esta... Eh, este, este amor que sin duda alguna Margot tiene por toda la costumbre y la cultura de Indonesia. Porque esto lo sabía ella antes de viajar y conocer en un viaje que hizo en febrero del año pasado. All this work, Margot Calderero Lela, uh, it, it talks about the culture of Indonesia. I mean, the, the incredible thing about this is this comes from France and it talks about Indonesia. That's what art does to you. It, it, it destroys all borders, it unites everybody. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether you eat chili or, or you like spicy food. Mm -hmm. uh, there is something that everybody has experienced at one time or another in their lives. Those who are fortunate enough to have a mother, or to have a, a woman that actually serving breakfast. It could be a cup of coffee and a croissant. It could be, uh, I don't know, scrambled eggs, whatever you want it to be. Or it could be this, but there is nothing more loving, nothing more important that somebody cooking with her own hands and give it to somebody. That's, it's, it's almost an, an offer, it's almost sacred. They're passing you where you need to be alive every morning. And many times, you know, we see somebody going, we don't think anything about that. And that was actually the first real action in which people became involved with what preserves life, which is food. Without food, we can't live. And it's been like this since the beginning, and it'll be to the end, the end of time. Hopefully, it won't be in the future where, you know, where people will give you a little pill that was you now set up in a lab, and then you eat it. But hopefully, it'll be like this, and people can still get a running table, a breakfast table, a breakfast nook, and, and say thank you to, to the person that actually prepared the breakfast, and, and enjoy it, and, and share the love. So thank you so much for being part of, of, of the show, but also for bringing uh, a culture that is foreign to you. I mean, you have to be a generous person to paint something that is not yours. Mm -hmm. yeah. Felicitación, Margo, y thanks a lot and for to be part. Uh -huh. Aviento. <laughs> Aviento, it's true. Seguimos por aquí con otra querida amiga, artista de la galería, que es artista permanente de Menduña Schneider Gallery desde el 2015. Muy amiga. Muy amiga Nos nuestra. Visita siempre, sí. Mónica Carbonel, Argentina, uh -huh. de Buenos Aires. Esta obra se denomina Nostalgia, es un óleo en canvas. Mónica Carbonel todos los años realiza su exhibición individual en Menduña Schneider Gallery. Bueno, y nos pronto, visita. Y nos visita. Y muy pronto, por supuesto, la tendremos otra vez por aquí. Sí. Monica Carbonell, it's, it's an artist that we have known for years and she always surprises us with different works that reflect uh, basically the way she feels about life and about uh, the time in which she's living. Mm -hmm. uh, she painted this work uh, during the pandemic 
she always, for whatever reason, she always uses the profile that looks into the future to the right for women because she always says that you have to look into the future. But in this one, because the pandemic took so many things away from us, the woman has the profile to the left and is looking to, uh, to a ship, you know, to sail. Um, and basically it's because she said that she misses uh, the fact that she couldn't come here uh, for the show and, and, and visit us. And what's so wonderful about this work again is that when you see the ship, it's not a cruise line, it's a tall ship. This is a 19th century ship, could be, or could be also just a regular uh, sailboat, but it doesn't have an engine. So she's looking into the past. And it's very important that we remember in this time uh, that we're celebrating today that uh, International Women's Day, is, it's in honor to those people that lived before us. Yeah. And it kind of sets a present for the ones that will come after us and hopefully by the world. So I think it's fantastic. Es fantástico. Esta, esta obra realmente es maravillosa. Saludamos a Mónica que está conectada. Por supuesto que nos veremos muy pronto sí, grande, en, en octubre. Esta obra, como bien decía Jorge en inglés, es una obra que, que Mónica pintó en este tiempo de pandemia y recordando también el, el hermoso momento que ella siempre eh, vive cuando nos visita. Así que un abrazo muy grande, Mónica, claro. y aquí te esperamos. Sí. Seguimos por acá con Estela Chan. Estela Chan es nacida en San José, California. Eh, uh -huh. Y ella cuenta que siempre su vida creció entre San José, California, Canadá y Taiwán. Citizen eh, of the World. Eh, ya, yeah. <ríe> Citizen of the World. La obra se llama The Woman Underneath. Es una mix media, es pintura, printed and, y aluminio en Divon Metal. Deberíamos decir que en castellano es sí. la mujer que reside adentro, The Woman Underneath. Sí, eh, nos cuenta Estela que esta mujer que reside adentro es el espíritu femenino que nunca muere a pesar de las adversidades insuperables. Mm. Eh, Estela me contaba, eh, de algún modo, que en lugar de centrarse en lo figurativo, representativo, realismo, ella completamente mm. abraza la idea de crear lo invisible para que cada pieza se convierta en una exploración visual. Lo que le sucede a ella es el resultado de su educación y de los tres países y culturas. Mm -hmm. En el momento en que aterriza, tuvo que cambiar, que aterriza en cualquier lugar que visitaba, como les contaba, Canadá o Nueva York, o bueno, en su ciudad natal, San José, o en Taiwán, ella se da cuenta que es un país diferente. Su sentido de sí misma, las costumbres sociales e incluso la preferencia estética tuvo que cambiar para asimilarse a la cultura dominante de cada lugar donde ella vivía. Para cuando ella tenía 12 años, se vio obligada a comprender que todo lo que es hermoso no está escrito en piedra, es fluido y transitorio. Eh, dependiendo de quién lo está viendo, por ejemplo, ella nunca es del todo taiwanesa, ni tampoco norteamericana, ni tampoco canadiense, según quien la esté viendo. Al creer así, no es difícil ver por qué Estela está más fascinada por la perspectiva con que las personas se emplean para ver las cosas y formarse sus opiniones, en lugar de estar fascinado por la opinión en sí. Maravillosa obra, eh, congratulations, Estela. I, we are so happy for your participation. Yeah, Stella Chan, the women underneath. And again, uh, she's a citizen of the world. I mean, this 21st century, this, this whole revolution that mobile nomad living that she had to experience before this, but that people are experiencing right now because in a way you can live in different places and do remote work. And the pandemic has done something that's actually not bad, even though everything was horrible, and it is horrible, is that it has ushered a way of working around the world in a remote way, which will liberate people from staying in just one country and being able to go and uh, experience different cultures all over the world. What I love about this work is that it reminds me of Borges. Again, the woman underneath. One woman is all women. The ones that came before, the ones that will follow. What I like about this work too is basically it has no color, it has white that is all the colors, it has shades of black, which is the absence of color. And I think it's very intelligent to have used like that because it's not limiting the woman to have a certain color. Like the woman cannot be limited to have a certain culture as it happened to her. Mm -hmm. um, she said that at one point she felt she had to uh, live according to the rules that prevail in a different society. 
So whenever she traveled and went, say, to uh, Taiwan, or went to San Jose, uh, San Jose, Canada. Silicon Valley, California. Yeah. But between Canada and, and, and the U.S. is kind it's of... similar. Yeah, it's not the same, but it's, it's similar. But, you know, when you go to Taiwan, it's completely different. But then she realized, she realized that you don't even have to abide to that. You just find beauty in who you are, even if temporary, because life is temporary. Yeah. And that's what's so well portrayed in this work. It can be any woman. Amazing. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Estela, for to be part to this exhibition. Seguimos por aquí con Tania. Tania es de Honduras. Tania Elizabeth Chávez Herrera. Uh -huh. Esta obra se denomina Sabia Realeza. Es un acrílico en, en tela. Sabia Realeza es la expresión del realismo mágico y la figuración estilizada. Es una composición casi simétrica, nos cuenta Tania, uh -huh. que refleja la personalidad de una dama con autoridad, pero que también tiene sabia, eh, eh, sabiduría perdón, y humildad. Sabe que sus decisiones afectarán a muchos, cierra sus ojos. Esta es la manera en que ella sublima este sentimiento. Como corona de perlas están sus sueños, proyectos, representados a través de los cuadros y de la armonía, que es una analogía de toda esta reflexión. La, los gajos de los colores cálidos y fríos son retos, trabajos eh, que dan mucha esperanza para terminar en un florecer al inicio quizás en un luto, eh, es un luto pero después terminan floreciendo hacia el firmamento esto es un poco lo que nos contaba Tania acerca de su maravillosa obra and to say a few words about Tania's work one thing that strikes me and I don't know if, if it happens to you guys it almost looks like a Hindu deity I mean, you could go and look at mythology all around the world, and this could be the statue of a Hindu deity, say, in Bombay. And, you know, it's in uh, Honduras, which tells you the subconscious. The subconscious is the same that unites every living thing in the universe. You know, it's, uh, we can go to the moon, and if we see another human being, we'll recognize the human being. So, you don't have to tell us this is a human, we, we just realize. So that sameness is underlining every single culture around the world. And as you can see, because of the peace, because of the state of well-being, you know, it can be also the state of well-being that uh, you attain when you do, for instance, um, the Tibetan, the Tibetan mm -hmm. bowls, you know, with yeah. the sound. It's almost in a sense of praying, but a praying not of, not of the... Uh, this is very important, not of the occidental uh, religious way, because it is not pain, it's just well-being. Uh, so this looks to me more like a, a native wisdom than whatever the, the, the conquistadores brought to, uh, to Latin America, basically. So it's, uh, it's wonderful, and it talks about well-being, and it talks about wisdom. Uh, without wisdom, you can have well-being. Without well-being, you can't have wisdom. So it's wonderful. Maravillosa obra, Tania. Felicitaciones. Mm -hmm. eh, tan colorida, tan llena de vida esta obra. Muchas gracias también por sumarte a la exhibición de International Women's Day. Seguimos por, por acá con Grasa Kraidi. Grasa mm -hmm. Kraidi desde Brasil. Bon día, Grasa. Bon Estaba por allí Brasil. conectada. Parabéns, and obrigado. Y, a, y por supuesto también saludamos a Gravura Galería y Alejandra mm -hmm. Malvicino. Esta obra se llama Poderosa. Es un, ol, es un pastel al óleo eh, sobre papel. Una mujer épica, victoriosa en los combates de la vida moderna, movida por el aire de su tiempo, elige su camino y su camino consciente de su poder, protagonista de su vida y de sus deseos. La obra de Grasa siempre está acompañada de mujeres. Eh, es una, la obra en sí, de todas las obras de Grasa me fascinan. No es la primera vez que participa, no, así que nuestro agradecimiento gracias. por volver a elegirnos. Y de esta obra, ¿qué decir de esta obra? Grasa, crazy, I mean, if you are familiar with art, you can find common things in Munch and George Walt because of the, of the palette that she uses, because of, of the way she works a la prima, because of the way she moves the brush strokes. You can see that's a woman that has a lot of scars and yet her chin is up. Her eyes are kind of slanted towards my right, which will be the left of the phone, looking away from me, but without any sign of being uh, defeated or being dominated by anybody. 
She knows something is coming. She knows that a storm is coming. She knows that a tornado might hit. But she's there. She's going to withstand every single thing that you throw at her. And that's what we're celebrating on this day. So, wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Para ver. Obrigado. Obrigado. Gracias. Mm -hmm. Seguimos por aquí con Kirenia Fernández Hernández desde Cuba. Esta obra se llama Avisal, es una mix media, una técnica mixta eh, sobre tela. Uh -huh. eh, es interesante porque está realizada con acrílico, con lentejuelas y también tiene cristales de Swarovski. Es muy interesante. Uh -huh. Avisal es una obra profundamente visceral en tanto que revela una condición ancestral de la mujer. El título incluido en la obra alude a esta condición. La zona visal, como la más profunda del mar, a donde nos llevan los rayos, donde no, no llegan sí, claro. los rayos del sol y permanece en su mayor parte aún sin explorar. Uh -huh. Hace referencia al inconsciente y a esa herencia. El cielo cuajado de girasoles simboliza el paso del tiempo. De un lado la cuna anunciadora de la vida que nace uh -huh. y que perpetúa la especie. Uh -huh. Del otro lado el fogón, el horno, el hogar, la responsabilidad. La figura femenina en el centro con una escoba florecida en alusión a la vara florecida de Aarón y al fondo, el mar. Es una obra que habla del, hero del heroísmo del amor, el heroísmo cotidiano e invisible de la mujer y el amor que permea cada uno de sus actos. And what to say about Kirenia. Kirenia Fernández Hernández. I mean, I have a weak spot for QAnar. I mean, we, everybody knows that. We have yeah. done so much stuff. And one thing, I want to say one, one thing about Cuban art that some people might not know. Uh, not because uh, they're, they're not educated, but because maybe they never pay attention to it. But there is something about Cuba that makes it art different. And basically, is that it's an island. I mean, you can say, well, Australia is a continent and, you know, it's surrounded by water. Yeah, but Cuba is being cut off you know, from the world for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And um, it's also surrounded for water, from water. So everything that they create, because they have so much censorship too, is what they imagine. Somebody who lives in Brazil might have some kind of influence because somebody from Venezuela crossed the border, or somebody from Uruguay crosses to Argentina, and then suddenly you go constructivism, I don't know. And somebody from Canada goes to the United States, or Germany, and, and, and France, you know, so when they, the, the Germans' expression is, used to work with the French, you know, so eh, you always have some kind of influence. The Cuban people don't have any influence. They are the influence. Yeah, absolutely. That's what's so wonderful. And when you look at this, this work, it's always the same thing. You know, Cuba has a long tradition of, it was an immigrant country and also a lot of immigration from Africa too. So they, they have the European immigration and the Cuban immigration. And then it kind of stopped. So they really had to be cohesive now. And they created this this culture in which mysticism and, 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 and the hidden world that they are unconscious and subconscious is always present. It's all symbolism. I mean, there's so many great artists from Cuba, you know, uh, Luna, uh, Cacho. Cacho. Well, Cacho, I don't like that much, but uh, Diaz Galvez, Diaz Galvez um, sí. Ulises Britannia, Menendez Mena. Menendez Mena. So, so many, Leona Acosta, Acosta Leon. So they, 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 Wilfredo Lam, of Wilfredo course, Lam, you know, Amelia Pelaz. And everything is done through symbolism. So when you see this woman, again, her shoulders are up, her back is straight, her face is up. You see the sunflowers, which represent every single sun that comes on somebody's life till finally, you know, you dwindle away and you die. And then you see the cradle, which is the beginning of life. And then you see all the shores that, that she does, you know, and All, all, all different chores that she does at home. She has to clean and she has to uh, prepare food. Uh, it, it just gives you the, this glimpse of what it is that a woman does. And it's much, much more than that. But you know, there's sometimes we don't even pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. And this is something that happens in every single culture all over the world. Yeah. So it's fantastic. Fantástico, Kenia. Ah. Y Kirenia, sorry. Y también queremos agradecer eh, Artes Visuales Pinar. Arte, él, sí. Y a Inelvis, que seguramente, Inelvis, seguramente han colaborado cambiando. con Alejandra Malvicino para sumar a esta gran artista cubana. Un gran abrazo a todos y bueno, felicidades. Y si no, no conocen el arte cubano en, en profundidad, búsquenlo, sí. porque es un mar sin fondo. 
te metes y seguís buceando, seguís buceando y seguís encontrando cosas. Es una In English, yeah. In English, if you don't know Cuban art, explore it. Because it's a bottomless pit. I mean, you keep going and going and, and, and there is no bottom. I mean, there's always something new. I don't know how they do it. And it's just fantastic. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Seguimos por aquí con Dirce, Dirce Fett de Brasil. Buen día. Buen día, Dirce. Y thanks a lot. Obrigado. Obrigado. And parabéns. Eh, esta obra se llama Señoras Inglesas 13. Es un acrílico sobre tela. Eh, Dirce cuenta que sensibilizar a las personas sobre el mundo real o imaginario, expresar las percepciones, mm. sensaciones y emociones de mi imaginación lejana y actual a través de los colores. Dirce nos cuenta que comenzó a pintar a los 60 años. Un poco tarde, dice. Nunca es tarde, dice. Pero siempre es hora de aprender. Nació en un pequeño pueblo eh, de Brasil que le trae muy buenos recuerdos. Eh, tiene un, un manojo de buenos recuerdos, de colorido de su infancia y todo eso trata de pregnarlo en cada una de las obras que pinta. Pintar es estar con los recuerdos incluso sin saber que están, que existen y que los tenía registrados. English Ladies pertenece a una serie de English Ladies, por supuesto, que muestra mi gesto en la pincelada y los colores de mi infancia. Dice... Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, one of the things I want to mention about this, because you know, we see the, the, the works on, on, on the cell phone, but some of these works are gigantic. I mean, this is uh, 1.5 meters by 1.3 meters. Uh, for the ones that don't know in meters, it will be like 60, 66 by, by 58 inches, something like that. So, and, and, and what you see here, I mean, what, what One thing that hits me about this is that you see all the colors, and the colors are very tropical. Mm -hmm. But if you're familiar with English gardens, they have a lot of colors too. Even though England is not tropical, but you know, they're really good at uh, kind of making all these flowers uh, play with each other and, and have different colors that kind of light up the whole front of the house. Um, one thing that I admire is that she says I started painting at 60. Uh, to me, uh, age, means nothing. Uh, and this little was in Monte Beauvoir, saying, no, you, you're not born a woman, you become one. When you're not born a painter, you become one. So and whenever you decide to do that, uh, you just go ahead and you do it. And Picasso used to say we were all artists. So I just chose not to kind of materialize it, but you know, everybody has the power to do this. And, 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 and what, what I like about this work is that flowers are, are hopeful. Flowers are always cheerful. And again, we're remembering something that uh, it's not that pleasant, but for whatever reason, society always remembers the bad things. We have to remember the bad things. You know, International Women's Day it represents something bad. And the Holocaust represents something bad. You know, 9-11 uh, represents something bad. It's like we are programmed to only have dates for bad things. And what's so good about this is that the flowers make it happy. And it's kind of how hope recycles all pain. Yeah. yeah. Felicitaciones. Parabéns, Lirce. Gracias. Muchas Obrigado. Gracias. Obrigado. Seguimos por aquí con la obra de Crisi, Crisi Jarguanco. Voy a tratar de mover también un poco aquí. A ver mm -hmm. si puedo. No, no puedo. Eh, quería que se vean todas las obras, pero así creo que vamos a trabajar de esta manera. Eh, Crisi es eh, oriunda de Estados Unidos, pero eh, ella vive en Panamá, ella está representando a Panamá. Mm. Esta obra se llama El fin de los tiempos oscuros, es una técnica mixta sobre tela. Y Crisi nos cuenta, pintando en Panamá cuando los números del COVID iban en aumento, eh, pinté est con este sentimiento y con la esperanza de que la oscuridad en el mundo debe terminar, o debe cambiar, mejor dicho. Durante la creación de esta obra, Mi hogar, eh, original de Estados Unidos, Tuvo una elección presidencial. No soy muy político, dice Crisi, ni me gusta mucho participar en discusiones políticas, pero como una persona consciente del medio ambiente, que miré los últimos cuatro años como tiempos muy oscuros para nuestra madre tierra, con la alegría de los colores brillantes pintó esta obra con la esperanza, los movimientos de barrido, y quise proyectar que la luz ahora entre nosotros está y que la tristeza retro es retro de será retrocederá, perdón, nada es permanente, incluso el ciclo de la oscuridad. Queríamos contar también que Crisi eh, hace buceo, claro. ella tiene una conexión maravillosa con, con la naturaleza. Thanks a lot, eh, Crisi, for to be part of the International Women's Day. Hi, Crisi. 
I'm so happy you're showing with us again. And I love the name, you know, which is the end of the dark times. It's like a dark ages. Um, making some reference to what Chris said about politics. Um, this was beyond politics for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't really care about politics just because I don't trust any politician. I don't care whether they're from the right, the left, the center. I mean, I just don't give a damn about it. Uh, because they like to be elected. I mean, that's what you do. Uh, Borges used to say that between a king and a politician, he would choose a king because the king can tell you I'm going to kill you and there is nothing you can do. A politician will tell you I'm going to save you and then screws you. But um, there were really hard times because every single environmental law was taken back by the Trump administration. So you could go to the Arctic uh, wildlife refuge and just start uh, drill for oil, you know, and, and, and and destroy the whole mm -hmm. environment and nobody cared because it was just about money. And you know, money at one point, when nothing is left, it will prove that you can't eat your dollars in order to survive. You know, you need food, you need water, you need a clean environment. So we agree and, and we're so happy that she also saw those years as dark times because it were dark times. And just because this country is so powerful, uh, when this country is dark, it, it kind of, uh, it projects a dark cloud all over the world too, so it's, uh, it, it, it wasn't fun. And the last year with the, with the pandemic here, I mean, being number one in pandemic, <laughs> it's like, you know, just go out and die, but you know, we gotta keep working the way we always do. And uh, we had 30 million cases, so that's, that's no fun. And we know people that uh, lost loved ones and uh, the sheer stupidity of it all makes no sense. But you know, uh, Kafka used to say that uh, if you think of 20 stupid people, are 20 stupid people. But if you think about 20,000 stupid people, they become a political party. And I think he was right, and he said that, you know, 70 years ago. So um, what I love about Chris again is Chris has something that I don't have. Uh, Alejandra doesn't have. Yeah. She goes to a different medium, but no painting. She goes into the water and she sees what we don't see because she does scuba diving, but not scuba diving as something recreational. She goes there with the eyes of an artist and she brings, brings everything back to us. That, you know, for us, that we're sort of in the cave, Plato cave, because we don't go into the water. It's all new and the images, the images are basically unknown to us. That's, uh, that's, what's so, yeah, that's what's so wonderful about her. I mean, she goes, she's kind of an archeologist of, of water, you know? <laughs> Some go into Asia and they bring it, uh, Tutankhamun and you know she goes into the yeah. water and brings all these landscapes and what I always uh, remark about Chris is that uh, they br she brings you all these landscapes that they move and, and, and they have all these colors that we don't really see and that gives you hope that there is something yet to be discovered so in dark times there is always light awareness there was a silver lining we just have to venture and discover it. And so in this day, and um, celebrating the, you know, uh, better times that are ahead. Absolutely. Uh, I really, I really appreciate what she did, that go, not, not to go where no one goes and, and, and bring back a, a work of art. Yeah. Some people bring destruction. They go, you know, to the ocean and they destroy it because, you know, that's, that's what they do. She goes into the ocean and she brings a work of art. So thank you so much. Thank you so thank much, you. Chrissy. Seguimos por aquí con Ida, Ida Heilgen. Espero pronunciarlo bien, Ida. Eh, Ida es de Bélgica. Heilgen. Heilgen. Mm. Heilgen. Heilgen. Heilgen, sí. My family is from Germany, so it's not Es de Bélgica, como les contaba. Eh, esta obra se llama The Girl with the Golden Earring, que es la, la mujer o la muchacha con su eh, aro de oro. Esto es un acrílico eh, sobre tela. Y Ida nos cuenta que esta obra está inspirada por todas las mujeres fuertes que nos rodean. La número 13 es feroz y está lista para tomar la vida con sus propias manos. También nos contó una historia que sucedió hace poquito en Bélgica, eh, donde oh, vive. Eh, una terrible historia donde violaron a una niña en una fiesta. Eh, los dos eh, muchachos que, la, que lo hicieron la filmaron, la subieron a las redes sociales. O sea, fue realmente una, una, eh, una acción terrible, toda, completa. Pero lo más terrible aún es que, por supuesto, eh, cuando lo juzgaron a estos muchachos, la justicia 
eh, no lo juzgó como debía, la Corte dictaminó que los dos hombres actuaron de manera precipitada, no sabían lo que estaban haciendo y no tuvieron castigo absoluto. Algo que tristemente sucede eh, en muchas partes del mundo, no, no solo en Bélgica. Eh, Ida lo que nos decía es que ella se sorprendía que Bélgica al ser primer mundo pasaran estas cosas. Pero bueno, pero otra cosa que quiero contar sobre la obra de Ida es que uh -huh. siempre refleja un ojo y no es casual. Eh, los ojos resalta, ¿no? resalta, sí, resalta un ojo y no es casual porque Ida se ha inspirado en esto porque ella cree que son el núcleo del ser de una persona, ¿no? Cuando el alma, como hoy en decimos, el ojo es el alma, es, el, es la mirada del alma. Mira, Heiligen, uh, from Belgium, I tell you one little secret. Yeah. Alejandra's daughter, Melody, she loves oh, Bruges and she absolutely. wants to go live in Belgium. Yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> Thank you so and much. She and she studied yeah. flamenco, right? Yeah, flamenco. Yeah, which is really complicated. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if you're from the French part of Belgium or the uh, flamenco part of yeah. uh, Flemish, mm -hmm. the Flemish part of uh, Belgium. One thing about this, this work, I mean, if you guys heard the title, I mean, it brings back memories of Vermeer. Yeah. Uh, the famous painting, you know, the girl with the golden earring. Mm -hmm. One thing that I do um, see and I like about this painting, uh, it reminds me, even though it's different, of the same concept that Modigliani used to have about the eyes. Modigliani never painted the eyes because he would paint one eye crossed and the other one open. And he said that one was looking inwards, the other one outside. And he said that basically, if you don't know the person that well, you couldn't paint the eyes because the eyes will reveal who the person is. In this case, through this painting, she's revealing that this woman, even though might have a golden earring, which, you know, it makes you a woman, makes you a beautiful woman in another painting, this one is really ready to take this, uh, the world by storm and to withstand whatever comes uh, at her. Um, one of the things that I like about this work too is, it, 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 is the simplicity of the lines too, that remind me basically the lines of Matisse. And um, the eye, the eye that, 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 that is actually uh, with a little brownish color, uh, uh, that eye has a different color too, if you see. The iris and the pupil are different from the other one. So it's, it's telling you a different person. And um, that's the one that is gonna basically take upon the world. Uh, the other eye is kind of a neutral, uh, run out of the mill eye. But the personality of the person is on that other eye. That's why the earring is on the other side, mm -hmm. which I think is wonderful. And regarding first wall, third wall, fourth wall, fifth wall, and all those uh, silly designation of countries, because I can tell you the United States might be the first wall, but we go to downtown LA and we have 150,000 homeless people living on tents. And you can go to a country called third wall and you know have a better health system than we have here. So it's a uh, It's not what it used to be before, and we all have to remember that first wall and third wall, it was not, uh, it had nothing to do with economic development, it used to be with the ones who were aligned to the United States during the Cold War, that was the first wall. The second wall was the Soviet bloc, and the third wall were the countries that were not aligned to either side. Uh, for instance, Sweden and Argentina were in the third world country, and Brazil too. But that was based on political ideology. Then, you know, when we came with this idea that uh, everything has to be uh, based on Economics, you know, we started dividing like that because, you know, we didn't like sometimes the uh, economic system that one country had, so we just, you know, put it down down there and we call it a third wall or whatever it is. But uh, I can tell you, for instance, Costa Rica has a better healthcare system than the United States. And, and, and that's, that's the way it is, right? You know, we are number one, <laughs> anyway. So, and then uh, what I was going with this is uh, the rape that took place. And, uh, you know, when it comes to a court, run by men, there's no first wall, third wall, fifth wall, second wall. There is only men judging something that happened to other men and a woman. So they, most of them, they're gonna say with men. They're horrible. It happened in Spain, that famous case about, you know, La Manada, the, the, the big uh, swarm of people that just raped one woman, like 20 of them, you know, in, uh, was in Pamplona, right? Yeah. They didn't sound for me. And they went free. Uh, it's, It's sickening, but it won't change until we have women, more women who are judges. Uh, yep. 
And it's, it's, it's a big problem in society today that you can have uh, a trial in which a woman is the victim, but everybody else, because you know, obviously Belgium is different from the United States. Here we have a juror. A juror has men, women. I mean, in, in that we kind of work a little bit better. Other countries have the judges deciding, which is a mistake. Because you have three men, of course you're going to have sympathy for them because you don't know who they are. Uh, that's why you need uh, a trial by, by jury. I mean, even though I sometimes, you know, I was once in one like that, I was a juror, and, and a woman was attacked, you know, and, and the guy ended up in jail, I and mean, I did it in Long Beach. Yeah. But other countries have the judges, and, you know, again, the people, people are faulty, they're men. They're going to say with men. It's, it's, it's sad, it's, it's what it is, but so it's horrible. Yeah, horrible. It needs to be changed. Yeah. yeah. Gracias, muchas gracias. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you so much eh, por ser parte de esta exposición. Mm -hmm. Seguimos por aquí con Paula Jería. Paula es de Chile. Mm -hmm. eh, esta obra se llama Desborde. Es un collage y también eh, lo trabajó digitalmente. Desborde habla de la dualidad de las mujeres, de la fortaleza y de la conciencia de quienes somos dentro de nuestras propias debilidades. Quería contar sobre Paula que ella también es una activista en Chile. Es una artista muy jovencita. También Ida lo es y que en este caso Paula eh, trabaja y tiene todo un grupo uh -huh. de artistas que trabajan de, de esta manera recortando, haciendo collage es un grupo fantástico así que felicitaciones eh, Paula y bueno, muchas gracias por sumarte a esta exposición Paula muchísimas gracias por participar de Chile thank you so much for participating from Chile this work is this board, it means kind of overflowing no, kind of spelling something And what I love about this, this work is what she mentioned something really important, duality. Every human being is, is, he has some complexities um, which don't decide who he is, but he has to overcome those complexities. Aristotle used to say that just because one day you are unjust doesn't make you an unjust man or woman. It depends where you go most of the time. So, and in all native uh, symbolism and legends, They used to know that the Native Americans used to say that in your heart you have a wolf and a dove. Mm -hmm. And you have to really pay attention to which one you're feeding because that's the one you're going to become. Um, of course, in a metaphor, eh? there's nothing wrong with the wolves. I mean, we, we don't eat animals here, <laughs> so of we, course. we love them. We love it. But what I love about this one is she's saying that it shows the strength and the weakness of a woman. To be strong doesn't mean that you don't have to have any weaknesses. On the contrary. You have to acknowledge your weaknesses, overcome them, and then use them as your pillows, where you stand and you face the world. Um, in Indian uh, legends or folk tales, there's another story about uh, the young Buddha. The young Buddha one day went, went hunting, and he had to get this, this, this ghost, the, 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 the sticky ghost, you know? So he took it. And this was something that I read from Joseph Campbell. And uh, he took, you know, his sword, he took his, his knife, and he took his bow and, and his arrow. So he saw the sticky Buddha there, you know, just boom, shooting with the arrow. And the arrow just stuck to, the, to Buddha's hair because it was sticky, but, but didn't uh, hurt him. So the, this Buddha keeps, keeps walking. So this little kid goes there and boom, uses a knife, and nothing happened, got stuck. You know, what, what, what's going on, right? So, and then he uses the knife and got stuck. So, he says, I can't kill you. And then this sticky Buddha was telling this young Buddha, because you know how it is that everything mm -hmm. in Buddha is enlightenment. He told him, well, what you have to do is accept me. When you have to accept me, you don't have to kill me. And then I'll be inside you, protecting you. And so he understood that he had to embrace his fears of this uh, being that he was supposed to attack because, you know, he was scary and was supposedly bad. And by him becoming his friend, he became stronger. And that's what you do with your fears. With your fears, you overcome your fears, you accept your fears, you build on your fears, and you become brave. Because if you build bravery without any fears, you become frivolous. And you can cause more harm than when you do with your own fears. Because when you are afraid and you build on that, then you're going to understand fears in other people and you won't hurt them. Yeah. Thank you so much, Paula. Gracias, Paula, por ser parte. Y felicitaciones, por supuesto, por todo el trabajo que también haces desde tu Chile. Mm -hmm. Muchas gracias. Muchísimas gracias.
Seguimos por aquí con Jacqueline para Benz. Jacqueline, again. Obrigado, buen día, Jacqueline. Buen día. Jacqueline es de Brasil, otra artista muy querida por ah, nosotros, sí. porque además ella fue ganadora eh, dentro de los tres ganadores del Cuarto Ojo, que Joder. celebramos en enero a los ganadores. De fotografía. De fotografía, es una... Jacqueline es una excelsa fotógrafa brasilera que ha... Profunda. Profunda, absolutamente, que además ha eh, variado todos los temas durante su carrera, entonces... Se ha bueno. dedicado al periodismo fotográfico, tiene libros. Bueno, es un ser maravilloso, lleno de luz, sí. sin duda alguna. Eh, la admiramos muchísimo. Eh, esta obra se denomina Caminos. Es una fotografía, por supuesto. Y ella, en esta obra, quiere representar los caminos y a las mujeres. Una obra, por supuesto, en blanco y negro. Eh, es una mujer en un, en, en un tren o en un subte. Un de subte un tren, sí. Con una valija. ¿Qué tendrá esa valija? Sueños. <risa> Claro que sí. Uh, Jacqueline Joner, I'm so happy you're with us again. Bon dia. Bon dia. And, you know, we love Jacqueline because the photography that she always shows us have so much inside. It's not just a work of art. It's a philosophy book. Um, I always think that life is basically a bag or luggage and your dreams. And then you start walking, but nothing. And here you have an empty coach, a woman, overly tired woman, mm -hmm. with all the comings and goings of yeah. her life, resting on her luggage. And that little twist, she's resting on the luggage. She's resting on her dreams. If we don't rest on our dreams, we won't have any strength to go look for our dreams. Because our dreams are the ones that give us the fire, and the fuel to walk in a world that is filled with razor wire, with, 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 with swamps, with, um, with bridges that only have been built halfway, and no, or halfway stairways. They're going to, to heaven and they get cut in half and you have to come down and look for another work. And every time you look for that another, for, for a different kind of walk that you have to take and a different uh, trail, you always take your dreams. And this reminds me of Frost, you know, that he came to, Robert Frost, a famous American poet, that he came to a road that divided in two. And he took the less traveled by, and then made all the difference. And obviously she's taking the less traveled by, because it's empty. Yeah. And that's what we love about that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Parabéns. Obrigado, Jacqueline. Muchas gracias por ser parte. Seguimos por aquí. Sí. También con eh, otra artista de Brasil. Bon dia, Milena Giuliano. Bon dia. Esta obra se denomina Menina Mujer, es, una, es un óleo sobre tela, eh, fantástica obra, es un homenaje que hace eh, Melina eh, Giuliano a las mujeres, fantástica, felicitaciones por ser parte, una vez más, porque Melina no es la, la primera vez que... Okay. Milena, perdón, Milena, Milena Giuliano. Nombre lindo, Milena. Precioso. Uh -huh. eh, Milena Giuliano es la, no es la primera vez que participa con nosotros, uh -huh. eh, así que muy agradecidos por ser parte una vez más de, de Mendoña General Gallery. Y Milena, ¿qué decir de tu obra? Tu obra me recuerda a Degas, Edgar Degas, que también pintó toda la parte de, de ballet de Francia, de París. Eh, también me recuerda a otras cosas que tienen que ver con el día de la mujer. Yo por ahí me voy un poco por las ramas. ¿Lo quiere decir en castellano? Pero voy a decir sí, en inglés, claro, porque por esto favor. es importante en castellano también. Hay una frase que yo digo siempre, que la vida es caminar descalzo sobre un alambre de púas. Y un poco es acá el bailar de la mujer sobre un alambre de púas. Now, going to English. The work of Milena reminds me of the guy that he painted the, you know, the ballet in Paris and he did so well in the 19th century. He didn't try to paint women dancing. He tried to get the essence of a woman and what it was to be a woman. And there is nothing that shows the spirit of a woman more than the dance from immemorial times till today. I have a phrase that I always say that, that in life we all walk barefooted over razor wires. You know, we have to keep our balance even though we're getting hurt. And you can use the same concept here, the same metaphor. I mean, in life you had to go dancing around all the obstacles that society throws at you. And why dancing? Because he has elegance. He had to do everything with elegance. 
and the dance builds, it doesn't destroy. So you can find your own road being elegant and being brave. So I, I really love it. Maravillosa obra, Milena. Eh, mm -hmm. Además, quiero destacar que Milena es una, una artista muy activa. Es fantástico cómo trabaja eh, todos los días. Eh, realmente muy sorprendente y muy admirable. Por supuesto, ahora está exhibiendo también en Canarias. Felicitaciones, Mirá. Milena. Muy Felicitaciones eh, también eh, a Gravura Galería, que sin duda ha sido ah, también Gravura parte. Galería. Y por supuesto, yeah. Alejandro. I want to say something in English yeah. too about In Gallery and Gravura Gallery yeah. and uh, Malvicina Palermo. Sí, Arte Global. Global Art. Uh, again, In Gallery, Gravura Gallery. In Gallery is in Sao Paulo, Brasil. Gravura Gallery in Rio Grande do Sul. And Malvicina Palermo, they live in Bahia in Brazil, and they have their own company called Arte Global, which is Global Art. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. So, uh, thank you so much. Thank for you so much. Yeah. Muchísimas gracias. Obrigado, por and, supuesto. And one more, let's not forget Mondial Academy yeah. in Canada and France. Joan, great friend, Pierre Rick. Yeah, and Pierre Rick. Wonderful Pierre. artist, too. Yeah. Wonderful person, wonderful artist. Eh, se nos va a cortar la transmisión, entonces lo que les voy a proponer es que vamos a cortar aquí y vamos a seguir porque tenemos, son 34 artistas, vamos recién por el número 17. The reason that the, well, this is what's going to happen. The streaming is going to be cut off the air just because uh, they give us, it's Instagram, 55 yeah, minutes. Exactly. So we're going to just sign off and then want to sign on in what, five minutes. Yeah, no menos, en un segundo. Okay, we sign off and then in one minute we come back. This yeah. is sort of like going to commercials and so on. Bear with us. Volvemos en dos we'll minutos. We'll be right back. Yeah. And I only see half of my face anyway. Okay. Seguimos por aquí con la obra. Ahí estamos. Esperamos que se conecten en un momentito. Yeah, let's wait for people to yeah. connect. Seguimos por aquí con la obra de Teresa Kodama. Teresa Kodama es una artista que se ha sumado por primera vez a la galería. Allí está conectada. Buen día, Teresa. Buen día. Un parabéns. Obrigado. Eh, Teresa es de Brasil. Eh, y esta obra es el glamurosa y romántica Amsterdam. Es un acrílico, tiene tinta y sobre panel. Es una artista, es, esta obra retrata un lugar que visitó junto a su familia, en Amsterdam, por supuesto. Y en este evento que está eh, en International Women's Day, acá en Menduña General Gallery, ella quería, de algún modo, reflejar un momento que ella vivió en Amsterdam con esta bicicleta con flores, en este mm -hmm. maravilloso lugar. Muchas gracias. Además, queremos felicitarla, porque ¿Ah? ha salido en un montón de notas de diario en, en Brasil. Y, por Muy supuesto, bien. muchísimas gracias por nombrarnos y muy agradecidos. Teresa, thank you so much for showing with us. One of the things that I love about this work, I don't know if you guys are familiar with De La Croix, pero no De La Croix, I'm not talking about the De La Croix. I, I cannot mix Spanish okay. English. I'm not talking about the De La Croix from, you know, way back when. And there's a Michel De La Croix, which is a modern French painter. I don't know if he died or he's 90 years old, but he used to portray Amsterdam like that a lot in Paris and sort of this way, always finding Uh, something familiar and playful about the place. Now, the bicycle can be the familiar tool that used to go around Amsterdam, and they're playful by the way they, they draw the, or they paint the, the, the buildings and the boat. And this, this work reminds me of that, uh, which again speaks about the subconscious of the artist. Uh, one thing that I love about this art is that it speaks about women without showing the woman. Just the bicycle with the flower. It just tells you what this is all about. I mean, she can be in a museum, the Van Gogh Museum, Gravia around there. Mm -hmm. uh, she could be walking on the canals, or she could even be gazing at the window of Anna Frank. Now we'll yeah. go to something sad. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, what I love about art is that it's when they show us something without painting the opposite. And here there's a woman, but there is no woman. Why? Because the essence of women is ever present. You don't need to see a woman to realize that women exist. You can see things around the world that you see the touch of a woman and, and, and you realize that a woman was there. So that's what is so wonderful about, about this, uh, this painting, you know, it's, it's the memory, but the memory, removing yourself from that memory. She didn't paint a woman to show that she was there. She just painted what she remembered 
and left the bicycle that any women walking around there can go and just go for the ride. Yeah. I love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. Parabéns. Ana, obrigado. Parabéns. Obrigado, Teresa. Obrigado. Seguimos por aquí. Esta artista es de Tunisia, de Túnez. Eh, mm -hmm. La primera vez que también participa en Mendoza General Gallery. Se llama Pride, Oil on Canvas. Esta pintura trata sobre la gloria de una mujer luchadora. Ella se siente orgullosa y feliz a pesar de su difícil pasado y su sufrimiento. Las mujeres son un símbolo de resistencia y de orgullo. La artista que pintó esta obra se llama Difalá Faosia, espero pronunciarlo bien, Difalá, eh, y es de Tunisia, de Túnez. Felicitaciones y gracias por ser parte. Difalá, thank you so much for choosing us, thank you so much for sending us your painting, thank you so much for showing the strength of women. Um, this comes from Africa, from Tunisia. I mean, this is again, the wonderful thing of art. Uh, we have mentioned artists from Argentina, uh, artists from Brazil, artists from Canada, artists from everywhere. And ev no, everything is done because of art. And this painting, as some other ones that we show, like the girl with the golden earring, yeah. for instance, it always shows the woman with the chin up. She's looking a little bit to the side, but she's, I don't want to say a proud woman because the, the word proud, I don't really like, but a woman that has well-being, a woman that is assured of who she is, uh, a woman that has fought for what she wants. And again, this is a recurring theme. It doesn't matter if it's from Brazil, if it's from France, if it's from Curaçao, if it's from Tunisia, it just happens everywhere, which shows you the commonality of people. Beyond countries, beyond borders, everybody's struggling about the same things. And what are those same things? To be acknowledged, to have rights, to be able to speak up your mind, to be able to say no, to be able to say no, to be able to say no. That's the hardest thing for societies to accept. Somebody who is considered perhaps through history weaker, and it's telling you no. That's why I repeat it three times. One thing we all have to understand is that a person has the right to say no, and that's okay. Thanks a lot, Thank you so much. to be part of the exhibition uh, International Women's Day. Mm -hmm. Seguimos por aquí. Muy bien. Seguimos con Mauro Laforga. Bon dia, bon Mauro. Dia, Mauro. Para Benz. Eh, Brasil. de Brasil, Contemplación Femenina, se llama esta obra, es un óleo, uh -huh. muy colorido, muy colorido por supuesto, con sus flores. Eh, ha tenido muchos saludos, Mauro, en las redes sociales, pero muchísimos, eh, más de 2000 likes, uh, así 2000. que felicitaciones Mauro, <risa> <risa> eh, tenés realmente un club de fans. Mauro, thank you so much, obrigado. Obrigado, parabéns. Uh, there is one thing that I want to uh, remark about this. Uh, this work is called uh, Feminine Contemplation, which basically, you know, it, it tells you everything that a woman feels and sees and is taken inwards. And it's done by a man. And that's actually really nice in this day that we have men honoring women. Not just uh, women saying no we're fighters, but people uh, on the other side of the spectrum, the way we call it, so, saying there is something that is irreplaceable in women and it's women itself. And if you look at the colors, uh, if you look at the palette, it has the colors of Klimt. I mean, if yeah. you are familiar with the kiss by Klimt, it has those colors. It has the same tenderness. It has the same introspection. It is there. You don't know what she's thinking. She's not sad. She's not happy. She has well-being. She's beyond all that. Because she's the spirit of every woman. Yeah. Hermosa obra. Mm -hmm. Preciosa obra. Thank you so Mauro much, Mauro. Forga. Parabéns. Obrigado. Mm -hmm. Obrigado. Seguimos por aquí con la obra de Gabriel Lavoye, mm -hmm. de Canadá. Canadá. Eh, Burbujas de felicidad se llama esta, esta obra. Me gusta decir que esta niña pequeña representa una paradoja extraordinaria entre la riqueza interior y la pobreza exterior 
dice Gabriel Lavoie. Una obra increíble. Esto es un óleo sobre tela. Mm -hmm. Hi Gabriel, thank you so much for, you know, joining us from Canada. Uh, you captured the essence of poverty and happiness so well. I mean, just poverty and happiness. Yeah, those two words that sometimes people can put together. They shouldn't exist together, but because we live in a world that is not an uh, egalitarian world, we have poverty. And yet in that poverty, it's not, we're not justifying poverty. I want to uh, really stress this. This is not about justifying poverty. But this is about saying that poverty, even though poverty has no dignity, like Dostoyevsky said, mm -hmm. because, you know, yeah. it's really hard. Even though some people tell, you know, you can you know, live a dignified life. No, there's nothing uh, dignified about poverty because it speaks really bad about society as a whole. But you can be happy in a sense that you see there is another layer of existence that we don't know. And through her happiness, hopefully she can overcome poverty and hopefully the world can realize once and for all that bad things don't happen to bad people all the time. You know, you can be poor and you can be a wonderful person, you can be a happy person and you were just dealt a bad hand in, in the game of life. Uh, this really hits me because uh, in the United States there's a phrase that always people use, you know, that say, you know, oh, something must have happened to her because she did something wrong. And we know life is not like that. I mean, a little kid in Ethiopia, you know, who's looking at the sky to see when it rains, didn't do anything wrong. And uh, a little kid that lives, I don't know, in Palestine and wants to be a basketball player, well, he can't be a basketball player because they don't have a basketball league. It's, yeah. that's, that's how sad this whole thing is. And sometimes, because we live in, in a Western society or societies that are free or almost free, you know, it might be first world, third world, but you can still go about your life the way you want it. We don't see these problems, you know, and some people can escape poverty and they might be beautiful souls. And the sad thing is that uh, the world is not doing anything about that. I mean, you can go to Haiti probably and there will be wonderful kids in Haiti and they're all poor and they're all happy, uh, but there is no dignity in the way they live because we shouldn't allow that to happen. Uh, but this is what this, it, it, it speaks about the wonderful human spirit that is hidden underneath layers of poverty and dirt. Yeah. Hello. Felici eh, felicitación, Gabriel. Eh, yo creo que Gabriel eh, de Canadá es de Quebec, porque Quebec. además eh, viene de mano también, eh, por supuesto, eh, siempre de Arte Global, pero de Mondial Art Academia, porque Mondial Gabriel Academia, fue Joana ganador, Pierrick. Joana Pierrick, porque Gabriel fue ganador dentro de los tres primeros premios importantísimos que Mondial Art Academia da en el año. Así que felicitación, Gabriel, fantástica obra, realmente maravillosa. Seguimos por aquí. Merci. Con, uh, merci, Gabriel. Merci. Eh, seguimos por aquí con Metis Art, que seguramente Metis habla también Florence, habla también francés. Ella pertenece a una isla eh, que pertenece a Francia, que se llama La Réunion. Eh, es una isla francesa. Les cuento un poco. Es de, entre Madagascar. En el Océano Índico, creo que es. Ya, yeah, entre Madagascar sí. y eh, Mauritania. Mauritania. Eh, está esta isla y esta artista, esta gran artista Metis Art, se ha sumado por primera vez a Menduña General Gallery. Una de las grandes... Eh, eh, ¿cómo, cómo le digo? Uno, uno, una de, los, eh, de las cosas más conocidas de la reunión, es medio loco esto, ah, ¿sí? es que es la autopista de los tiburones blancos. Sí. Que van de África a Australia. Sí, así que es bastante Pero, peligroso hacer, ¿no? Claro, lo, lo en, loco es que... Antes de que ella se reuniera, había visto un documental en Netflix que hablaba justamente de la isla sí. esta y los tiburones blancos. No tiene nada que ver, pero es así la cosa, como decía Charlie. En realidad eh, fue muy interesante sí. porque hay como una sincronicidad. Conocimos a esta claro. artista y, por supuesto, eh, nos dimos cuenta que era la misma eh, isla que habíamos mirado claro. la, el documental semanas atrás. Así que sí. estamos muy contentos realmente que Metis se haya sumado, Florence se haya sumado con nosotros por esta cuestión también de, de ser un, un lugar que por primera vez se une a Mendoza. Una isla hermosa también, ¿no? Ah, sí, es una isla paradisíaca. La obra que está pre eh, presentando en este momento Metis es de Women World, es un acrílico con canvas y también tiene mix media, es una obra muy representativa. Congratulations. Eh, voy a hacer unas cositas en castellano a esta obra y después también en inglés. Sí, por favor. Eh, nosotros hace poco hicimos un, una muestra uh -huh. eh, con un festival muy importante de San Pedro. Noviembre del año pasado. Sí, que habla del tráfico humano, yeah. el tráfico de personas. 
el mundo que ella nos está mostrando en esta obra, por supuesto vemos la barra, como que estás en venta, vemos el dinero. No necesariamente habla del tráfico de personas, que también puede hablar de eso, pero también habla de cómo uno ve a la mujer en muchos lugares. Está a la venta. O sea, uno puede ir a conquistar a una mujer porque tiene dinero o porque tiene poder. El poder generalmente le quitó los derechos a la mujer y la utilizó. Eh, es una obra que tiene una dualidad, tráfico de personas y también la vida común de la mujer, que bueno, vas a buscar un trabajo y si no haces lo que el, el jefe quiera, aunque él quiera eh, sobrepasarse en lo que puede hacer, te echan del trabajo sí. y nadie te restituye al trabajo. Eh, es una obra fuerte, eh, pero Así no hay que mirar para el otro lado, porque esas, eh, estos horrores hay que confrontarlos. Metis, thank you so much from La Reunión. I was saying before that I saw a documentary about your island, about white sharks, but anyway. I mean, I'm living in California, I mean, we, we have our share of those yes. too. But before you join uh, this show, when Alejandra told me, I said, I know that island. And she said, how do you know this island? Because I saw a documentary on Netflix. Anyway, that's, that's how La Reunión became uh, something known for us. Um, about your work, I'm so happy because again, you know, you, you come from places that most people don't even know what they are. I mean, you have to go to a map and look at this Madagascar and this Mauritania and this, no, La Reunion. And what I love about your art is that you speak about things that the people don't want to speak about, or people don't want to look at. Um, in last November, we have a show about human trafficking and how women are for sale. A lot of times they go to Eastern Europe and Southeast Asia and they're trafficking from everywhere in the world even here to the United States. Uh, it's one of the largest businesses in the world after, you know, arms dealing, drugs, and then human trafficking. You know, yeah. It's insane. insane. And you have, you know, heads of states and politicians. Jeffrey Epstein, I mean, the guy that died here in jail, he was, mm -hmm. you know, uh, running a, a sex trafficking ring, yeah. which is horrible. But also, I see the duality of your work. I mean, it can be that, but it can be the other thing too, that women, through history had always been in this inferior position to money and power. I mean, you can go apply for a job and, and, and if your boss wants to do something that's not appropriate, he fires you and there are no consequences for him. And somebody wants to go out with you and maybe you don't want to, but they try to impose their money and their power. And this is something that we don't talk about it in, in society. Uh, we think everything is pitchy clean, as they say here, and, and it's not, it's, it's, it's buried in layers of dirt. So thank you so much because you, you remind us that there's still a lot of work to be done ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Merci. Merci. Ana Viento. Felicitación, Metis. <laughs> Seguimos por aquí con Marisa Moscoso, una amiga muy querida de la galería, una artista que la galería representa. Ella es argentina, nacida en Buenos Aires. Esto es un dibujo fantástico. Esto es un dibujo, nos sorprende Marisa con la variedad sí. de obra. Eh, Marisa Moscoso eh, realizó esta obra en grafito sobre papel. La obra se llama Floreciendo después del abismo. Pertenece a una serie. Con Marisa Moscoso. Moscoso fue la primera artista emergente que tuvimos en la galería. La primera artista y la primera exhibición individual. La primera exhibición individual. Eh, en abril del 2016. Claro, nosotros manejábamos artes desde antes, ¿no? Como Marchand y esas cosas. Pero cuando abrimos la galería, no solamente para grandes maestros, porque nos manejábamos con grandes maestros, sino para artistas emergentes y de media carrera, la primera fue Marisa Moscoso. Marisa Moscoso. Y nos vino a visitar y viene siempre. Viene todos los años como Mónica Carbonell. Mónica Carbonell. Claro. Eh, y pues, también Marisa Domínguez. Bueno, Marisa Domínguez, mucho, mucho. Que mucho. vienen a visitarnos Miriam Yende. Miriam Yende. Bueno, no, mucha, sí. muchas artistas queridos y que, bueno, vuelven, con lo cual eso quiere decir que. Eh, la pasan muy bien, nosotros la pasamos genial realmente. Sí, sí, sí. <risa> eh, les comentaba acerca de esta obra que pertenece a una serie que se llama Naturaleza Humana de Marisa. Este es el dibujo número 4, el que habla de una mujer árbol que finalmente, después de una larga lucha, consigue levantar sus ramas hacia el cielo y nuevamente florecer. I'm gonna say some things in English. Well, ah, first... Quiero decir algo en castellano no, no, dale, antes. Dale. Está su hija. Ah, hola. Eh, junto a nosotros. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo ¿Qué estás? Tal? Dice, hermoso dibujo orgullosa de mi madre. Pero quiero decir una cosa en castellano hermoso. también de esto. Hay una película de hace unos 15 años que trabaja Hugh Jackman uh -huh. y Rachel Weisz, uh -huh. que se llama The Fountain. 
Ya. Que es la fuente. De fu la fuente. Que habla de la inmortalidad. Y todo está en el árbol de la vida. Y el árbol de la vida es eso. Eh, el árbol de la vida no puede ser un hombre. Tiene que ser una mujer. Bueno, volviendo a este tema del árbol. Sí. Eh, nosotros que todos los meses, como ustedes sabrán, tenemos la entrevista con Daniel Fernández, el artista com, ah, que sí. pertenece a la Nación com en, en, mm. en Chaco, Resistencia, no, en Argentina. Argentina sí. eh, bueno, eh, una de las partes de la cultura, de la cosmogonía com, es el árbol que es fuente de la, la Pachamama, ellos en realidad la llaman de otro nombre pero que aparte, ahora no recuerdo, pero eh, mañana seguramente le vamos... Mañana tenemos una entrevista con Daniel eh, a las 13 horas, así que le voy a preguntar cómo se llamaba el árbol. Pero aparte hay una cosa que tenemos que saber todos, antes de que las diosas fueran enviadas al exilio, sí. todo tiene que ver con el útero femenino. Claro. Eh, las... Eh, sociedades primitivas, las culturas primitivas pintaban en las cavernas, no porque tenían frío pintaban en las cavernas porque era el útero donde se concebía la vida las, eh, yo no soy eh, religioso de, de, de fe católica ni nada de eso, no, no, nada. no me interesa pero por ejemplo las iglesias cuando las hicieron en su momento la parte llevada al altar era como el útero, representaba esas cavernas sí, totalmente eh, después, bueno, nosotros con nuestra cultura occidental, que es, es todo superficial, llegó a ser un dogma y a nadie le, uh -huh. no hay profundidad. Se olvidó también esa... No, se tapó. No, no, se tapó. Claro, no se olvidó, se la exiliaron, no le convenía. Sí. Uh -huh. Como cuando iba a la iglesia y te construía las iglesias arriba de los templos paganos. Es lo claro. mismo, bueno. Now, I want to say some things in English. Yeah. Before yeah. I, I go from Marisa. Um, to those of you, I don't know if you ever saw the movie The Fountain. We, uh, with uh, Hugh Jackman and Rachel Weisz. Um, it's about finding immortality where life, never-ending life comes from. And it's, it's a thrill like that. I mean, that's, that's what's so incredible. The final scene of the movie, uh, Hugh Jackman is climbing a tree just like that. And as I said in Spanish, uh, only a woman tree can represent immortality because of the womb. All life is there. It's the run, it's the run of the earth. Everything is run. Everything comes from there. So it's really appropriate that in this day we get this tree that is blossoming again after a hard time, as Marisa said, after, after uh, almost dying, dying of thirst, and a woman could be dying of injustice. And you are reborn, and again, you extend your branches. And, and, and you give everything to the world again. So it's, it's wonderful. Wonderful. Maravilloso, Marisa. Muchas gracias por sumarte a esta exhibición. Como mm -hmm. siempre, muy contentos, sí, muy orgullosos. Sí. Y bueno, sí, sí, sí. te esperamos, creo que en mayo viene para hacer su exhibición individual. Mira. Nos seguimos por aquí con Alicia Natay Achón de Trinidad y Tobago. Trinidad y Tobago. Por primera vez, Alicia está exhibiendo en una exposición. Ella eh, es una artista que conocimos también por las redes sociales. Esta obra se llama Rompiendo las cadenas. Este trabajo es un homenaje a las mujeres que sacrificaron tanto durante tanto tiempo y lucharon por las libertades y los derechos en todo el mundo. Gracias a su sacrificio colectivo y su, y su incansable batalla por los derechos humanos básicos. La mujer, que es el tema de esta obra, está representada como magullada, con las extremidades dañadas, parte de su cuerpo hinchado, pero se mantiene valiente y resuelta en su lucha contra las injusticias que enfrenta, con la voluntad de romper esas cadenas que la atan. La técnica que utilizó Alicia es eh, eh, tinta, eh, pintura en cáustica y shellac en, eh, sobre tela. Felicitaciones, congratulations Alicia, we are so happy with your participation in International Women's Day. Alicia, thank you so much from Trinidad and Tobago. Wow. Wow. That's, that, that's, that's something else. Um, thank you so much for making this poignant, poignant work. Um, this woman, she's in shackles, she's in chains. Uh, she has bruises, she's been beaten up. Uh, she's been always held against her will. And that representation also brings the hope that you mentioned, that mm -hmm. she's going to break free from the shackles and from the chains and from the abuse. And it's going to blossom into whatever she wants to be. Uh, and I see this again, you know, this recurrent 
theme again, you know, from uh, Reunion Island, from, from Canada, from, from Tunisia, from Belgium, all this fight, all this fight that women had to do to become who they want to be. Um, we live in a world that unfortunately have trained us to think, to think that the rights have to be given to us. Uh, somebody tells you you have the right to speak. No, 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 no. I used to have that right before government came into power, before men and women sabotaged themselves and put somebody in power that they did it 180 on them and said, well, from now on, all the freedom that you have, you're not going to have it. You're going to have only the freedoms that are right into law. Whenever you have a law, that law takes away freedom, even though you think it's giving you freedom. It's what Gandhi used to say. Whenever the law is immoral, it's okay to fight against them. So it's a shame. It's a shame that in some countries, so many countries, women are in shackles. Women cannot show their faces. Women cannot wear a skirt the way they want to. Even if it's a religious concept, I don't care. It is wrong. Uh, they tell me faith. Well, well, faith is the ignorance of truth. So it doesn't exist. So whenever they tell you they dress like this because of what they believe, let them be free. Because if we don't teach people to believe these atrocities, nobody will really believe that. But we live in a world in which we try to take away rights and then give you some. And then you think grateful that they give you the right, the, the right to go out on the street, to speak, to uh, assemble with some people, to protest before they beat you with a baton, you know? So that fight is not only women's, it's everybody. And as the world moves forward, it's going to be more and more and more because with all this face recognition technology, uh, with all this law that supposedly they tell you I'm protecting you, you know, I don't want to be protected. I want to just live and die and take care with everything. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alicia. For doing this, yeah. Thank you so much. Seguimos por aquí con Jessica Pacheco García. Jessica es de Perú. Mm -hmm. eh, esto es un óleo en canvas, un óleo en sobre tela. Fantástico. Eh, maravillosa obra. Vuela Fantástico. alto. Eh, Visiones de Mujer es, pertenece a la serie Visiones de Mujer. Jessica nos cuenta que su obra representa a la mujer elegante, delicada, con una mirada soñadora, vehemente, equilibrada y decidida, con una fuerza interior que no se detiene, detrás las montañas, que es el mundo nuevo, que es la espera, la que la inquieta y que le da aires de libertad y la sabe sus sueños y sus metas. Las mujeres siempre han luchado con coraje, advers eh, con coraje para destruir las adversidades, superando retos, alcanzando metas, uh -huh. con esperanza, con amor, en un mundo a veces difícil pero no imposible. Eh, Jessica es una artista muy jovencita de Perú. Ella estudió también con eh, Cirilo Quintana, un artista que representa la Galería Felicitaciones. Jessica, por ser parte. Maravillosa la obra, claro. es increíble, eh, fascinante. Felicitaciones. About this work. Fly as high as you can. Uh, the one thing that Jessica does here to me, which uh, it makes the painting stand up, is that she puts the new world, but not the new world that something has to be discovered, as people usually convey the new world, which in reality was the old world for the people living there. The new world was the guys that come in on the ships, right? I mean, it depends how you look at it. But those mountains, is where her treasure lies, is where her dreams are, is where she's gonna go. That's why, and she wants to do it in a gentle way, which is the way of the peaceful warrior. It, you go gently to your dream. You don't go to your dreams with the sword killing and slaying people. Because by the time you get to your dreams, you only carry dead. So what you do is you go gently, you walk gently, you walk self-assured, but with respect, so that once you get there, you're covering life, and your dreams will be made out of life. And that's what's so wonderful about this painting. And there is nothing innocent about the painting. Um, and there is nothing uh, childish. It requires a lot of strength to go for your dreams in a peaceful way. Maravillosa obra, mm -hmm. Jessica. Felicitaciones por ser parte. Seguimos con Marta Parra desde México. México. Eh, esto es un grabado. Eh, usa una linografía abriendo puertas, se denomina la obra, mm -hmm. que representa esta linografía a las mujeres que no temen. Cerrar puertas en la vida para abrir nuevas puertas. Las que se adaptan y trabajan por respuestas y oportunidades. Las que cambian el mundo e inspiran. 
son luz y ejemplo las que aman y son capaces de dar amor a raudales y a la vez dar fortaleza y tener intuición. Marta, Marta Parra. Desde Marta México. Parra. Eh, con una tradición Abriendo eh, en grabado sí, increíble claro, de México, increíble. De, de Orozco, Siqueiros. Eh, Los grandes talleres de serigrafía mexicanos. Anguiano, hay, hay, hay tantos, tantos, tantos que son fabulosos. Eh, una de las cosas que noto otra vez, eh, lo digo en este pero es en inglés, de manera recurrente acá, es que todos hablan de abrir puertas, de luchar, de ir por sus sueños. Que esto nos dice una cosa básica, eh, la vida es dinámica. Y si tu vida no es dinámica, no estás viviendo. Entonces, esto es simple. Eh, siempre hay algo por, por encontrar, siempre hay algo por aprender, por entender. Entonces siempre eh, tenés que seguir. El, el dar un paso hacia el horizonte es lo que salva al ser humano. Totalmente. Eh, y esto lo representa muy bien. Uh, now, Marta, el libro en inglés. Dice el Inocat. Uh, Mexico has a long tradition of... My God, great printers, uh, again, Siqueiro, Orozco, Rivera, Anguiano. There are so many. I mean, the, 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 the Mexican school is sort of like a universe school because there are so many and, and they have influenced so many people all over the world that, uh, I mean, we would need days to talk about this. Uh, what I love, I love about this, this printing is she opening a door. She's, again, opening a door. It's a recurring theme, you know, to go for your dreams, to open a door. And the door is dark. And yeah, you know, you have to go where there are no lights. If you want to go and find what life is uh, having for you, you have to really venture in, in, into the abyss. Like Nietzsche said, or, or like the well in mythology, that you go inside the well, you know, like, like Jonah. Mm -hmm. And this woman is going there. She's going there and she's self-assured. And she's looking at, it, looking at us and saying, well, I'm going. And she's going to go and she's going to find what she wants. And she's going to take what, she's, what is rightfully hers. Uh, again, fantastic. And, and, and the technique is fantastic. And, 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 and the story that tells me is fantastic. Sí. Because uh, she's going in, sort of like going into, I don't know, a living room opening a door. But no, she's going into the room of life. her life. Yeah. Y queríamos, quería también renombrar que Marta es la segunda vez que participa, así que muy agradecidos. Muchas gracias, Marta, eh, sí. Porque muchos artistas se han unido una vez más a la galería en estas exposiciones. Que nos encanta. Gracias, sí. nos encanta realmente. Yeah, Muchísimas so gracias. Seguimos por aquí, con Piro Pascal, desde Francia. Eh, se llama metes, eh, Metamorfosis, no. Metempsicosis. Yeah, it's a, it's a combined word. Yeah. Metempsicosis of Lida, which is a metamorphosis yeah. of Lida. Sí, es un óleo mm -hmm. y habla de la eh, migración. La migración del alma después de la muerte a un nuevo cuerpo. Ah. Fantástica obra de Piro Pascal desde Francia. Una cosa en castellano también sí, de esto. Por favor. Eh, obviamente esto está basado en el mito de, Me, de Lida y el sí. cisne, que Zeus se, se convierte en cisne. Lo fantástico de Piro es que él lo lleva más allá. Este Exacto. no es un dios que viene a embarazar a la mujer para que tenga a su hijo. Como cuenta la leyenda, claro. ¿verdad? No. Este es un, eh, un alma que viene para que la otra alma migre a un nuevo cuerpo. Es fantástico. Es una transmutación hay... en castellano. Claro, transmutación. Eh, esto es muy... Eh, recurrente en toda la literatura eh, hindú. Sí, es cierto. Eh, que, que vas de un alma a otra. Y bueno, una, una técnica eh, increíble. Sobresaliente. ¿no? Bueno. Now in English. Piro Pascal. Piro Pascal. He combined two words. Uh, this is a French word because he has an accent. We don't have accents in English, but it be the metempsicos of Lida, which is basically kind of a metamorphosis of Lida. Uh, he drew this from the myth of the swan and Lida. And in this painting, what he's doing is he's going beyond. He's not just telling us uh, that I'm a God and I come here to impregnate a woman and then she has my child. No, 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 no. This is a soul that transmutates in another soul. He's talking about that everything is immortal. The soul of the woman is immortal. You go to a new body, and then a new body, another body, and another body. And again, this is right online with Jorge Luis Borges, uh, uh, which is the 
a writer that I admire a lot, which says that one woman is every woman. It's the women that came before her and the women that will come after her. This painting is all the souls that came before her and the ones that will come after her. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Piero. Yeah, uh, and, and keep painting because it's... Increíble. Increíble it's obra. Yeah. Muchísimas gracias por ser parte. Seguimos por aquí con Virginia C., una gran escultora brasileña. Bon día. Bon día, Virginia. Es la segunda la vez que Virginia vez. participa y además sí. fue ganadora en el multidisciplinario uh, sí, 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 Salón sí, una, una en, en diciembre del año pasado. Sí. Esta es una escultura en bronce. Que es enorme, aparte de la escultura. De 1,76 metro 76 claro. de alto. Es una eh, persona, 1,76 metro 76. Which madre is, se llama, es which bronce. Which is roughly 70 inches high. Es bronce. Yeah. Y por supuesto, esta madre representa la creación, la mm -hmm. esperanza y el amor incondicional. Una gran escultora brasilera. Eh, felicitaciones para Benz, Virginia. Well, Virginia, uh, you know, you blow us away again with, with a sculpture like this. Uh, this is a life-size sculpture. It's uh, 71 inches. And there's no pedestal. I mean, that's a sculpture, okay? Yeah. And what is incredible to me is that a maternity can be reflected so tenderly in something as hard as bronze, uh, which is, is, is a paradox a little bit, you know, that, that, that you can be really gentle, but you have to be really strong to protect the life that you have within you. Um, in a day like this, in a day in which, you know, we're remembering all, all the women that uh, help us build what we have today, uh, To bring a maternity in bronze, it kind of pays tribute to that, uh, to that strength and courage and bravery that every woman has shown through, uh, through their life. I mean, it's just uh, being a mother, not being a mother, but you had to be make within an armor to confront uh, what the wall is going to throw at you, more being a woman. So it's fantastic. Parabéns, Virginia. Parabéns. Muchísimas yeah. gracias. Seguimos por aquí con Patricia Silva Ibáñez desde Uruguay. Uruguay. Esta obra denominada Árbol de la Vida, Cuerpos Germinados, de la serie Cuerpos Germinados, es una técnica mixta en papel. Eh, queremos también saludar a, a Patricia porque es una artista que también pertenece a la galería también. desde el inicio. La queremos muchísimo, en abril sí. va a ser su segunda exhibición, eh, perdón, su tercera, tercera. exhibición. Eh, me, me refería al, a, a, la, a la trilogía de esta obra. Esta obra pertenece a la tercera parte de, de un... Eh, déjenme ver, de una trilogía, perdón. Eh, la primera la exhibió Patricia eh, Silva Ibáñez en la galería, que era Cuerpos Rasgados, sí. ¿recordás esa exhibición sí, sí, que sí, fue sí, increíble? Sí, 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 sí. La segunda es la que vamos a exhibir, una exposición individual en abril, que se llama Cuerpos Surcidos o Restañados, y esta serie pertenece, esta obra pertenece a la serie de cuerpos germinados. Claro. Eh, la, eh, Patricia además viene de una familia de artistas, de escritores muy famosos, muy reconocidos en Uruguay. Ella mm. es de Montevideo. En esta trilogía poética de los cuerpos, así se llama la trilogía, en la que está trabajando también actualmente, comienza con la serie Cuerpos Rasgados, como bien le contaba. Se continúa con Cuerpos Restañados y se completa con esta que es Cuerpos Germinados, que aún está en proceso. Trabaja a partir de collage, superficies de color uniformes, que emergen dibujando simboli simbolismos, hojas, raíces, Ajá. bueno, en este caso el bebé. La verdad, la obra de Patricia siempre es muy profunda y estamos muy contentos de su participación. Muchas gracias, Patricia, por su Marte. Patricia Silva, I'm going to say this in English because you know yeah. I'm speaking too much and then we're going to have to stop again. <laughs> yeah. So I'm saying one thing that, 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 that really strikes me. Uh, Patricia is, a, is the artist that works in different kind of works that are always related to the one before. That's why it's a trilogy. Uh, the one before this was basically bodies that were cut and severed showing uh, pain and abuse and neglect. Then the second show that we're going to have, we shouldn't be talking much about this because we're going to have the show, but anyway, the second one is the healing of those bodies. Yeah. And the third one in the trilogy, which will be this one, is the blossoming of those abuse in the past, heal now, bodies that finally are ready to give to life what they have to offer. Yeah. If we see in this painting, there's a baby. There's a baby 
just balancing in one of the branches. But also we see the scar, you know, from the pain before. And every single woman, every single being actually, and I can say uh, woman, uh, men, animals, flowers, trees, we all bear the scars of our hardest moments in life, whether it can be psychological in a person or physical. Uh, in a tree, we see it sometimes when somebody just cut, you know, the, uh, the trunk of a tree and an animal. Uh, but that doesn't make us less beautiful or, or it doesn't take away something from us. That shows life and life is like that, you know, life cuts you and, 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 and scratches you and then allows you to heal and then you do something and you're happy and then it comes at you again. And you know, all, all this recurrent thing, like the tree from Marisa Moscoso, in the end, gives you what? Life. Life, always. So life beats death, so that the world is not nihilistic in nature. Even though we might live, somebody will come after us. So it's an, a never ending process. It's a will that keeps going. Felicitaciones. Mm -hmm. Patricia, y muchas gracias una vez más por sumarte a las colectivas y bienvenidos a todos en abril, quienes eh, Patricia estará celebrando su tercera exhibición individual en Mendoza Schneider Art claro. Gallery. Seguimos por aquí con Gabriel Sousa desde mm. Brasil. Fantástico. Para ver, Gabriel, eh, la obra se denomina I Don't Care. Eh, no me importa. No me importa. Es, una, es un óleo sobre tela. Y Gabriel nos cuenta, el mundo moderno concede poca importancia a las artes y los pensamientos clásicos. La modernidad y el desinterés por el pasado se borran poco a poco de la memoria del mundo inmediato. El mundo moderno concede eh, poca importancia, como les decíamos, y esto es un poco lo que él quiere demostrar eh, en esta obra maravillosa. Es un óleo sobre tela. Eh, felicitaciones, Gabriel, también por ser parte y bueno, muchas gracias por elegirnos. What, what we love, or I love about Gabriel here, if you see, there's a woman just lying on her back, reading a magazine, a book, and underneath, there's all these centuries of history. They've just been buried into oblivion. I just don't care, you know? And it kind of shows uh, this uh, arrogant point of view of modern society, you know, that we think we know better than the ones that came before us. Um, we think we know better because we fly and people before used to ride horses. And you know, to me, it's the same thing. The only difference is that now we take showers more often. But you know, we're still having the same problems, even more problems, because we're completely detached from what came before us. And, and this is the problem that we have today in the world and, and, and International Women's Day, I have to remark this. We don't have to forget where we come from. Women don't have to forget where they come from. Whenever they show you, you know, the future, you have to think, okay, that's the future, but what am, where do I come from? Because if I know my past, I can understand my future. If I don't know my past, you can take me anywhere, even if it's a mirage, and I'm gonna think that's the final destination. Mm -hmm. I think it's incredible. I think it's a different point of view that we have today, that sometimes, even women, yeah. can say, I don't care. I don't care. And uh, we shouldn't do that because if we don't care, nobody else does. Parabéns. Parabéns. Gabriel. Fantastic. Obrigado. Seguimos por acá con la obra de Magna Sperm. Mm. Magna es uh. un artista de Brasil. Buen día. Buen día, Magna. Es un artista increíble que además también es escultora ah, ganadora sí. del Multidisciplinary uh. Salon en diciembre del 2020 en la galería. Esta obra se denomina Prada 2. Es una serie que pertenece a Mentiras Sinceras. Es un acrílico sobre tela y tiene adhesivos. Eh, esta serie de pinturas en eh, mentiras sinceras protesta por el uso de mujeres siempre jóvenes y perfectas en anuncios de moda que llegan a creer que este es su verdadero y absoluto y, y alcanzable para todas las mujeres. La revelación de la realidad no, eh, ni siquiera siempre está perfecto y traducido en los repugnantes insectos, tiene la intención de esta cuestión efímera de la belleza. La vejez importa eh, inexistentemente en las publicidades de, de consumo que vemos a diario y elige esta serie para ser parte de esta exhibición. Esta serie empezó en el 2011. ¿Y por qué la eligió? Porque retrata bien la imagen que hacen los medios de comunicación a la mujer. Un ser frágil, un adorno, cuya importancia es mayor o menor según su belleza, su edad. 
una obra eh, excelsa. Eh, magna, toda la obra de Magna es increíble. Magna. Felicitaciones sí. para Benz por ser parte. Magna, you, you really surprised me because I thought you were a sculptor, but <laughs> my God, you're a hell of a painter too. And one thing I, I want to talk about is, it reminds me a little of the work of Alex Katz in the United States, but uh, Alex Katz is not this deep. No. Uh, he, stays, <laughs> he stays in, in the fear, but you have something that people don't think about. You just call it sincere lies. Uh, and why is that? Because the lie is a truth. A lie is a truth on its own. We know it's a lie. That's the truth of the lie. It's a lie. So when they lie to you, they're telling you something sometimes that they truly believe is the truth. We may have to be like this, and it's a lie, but you know, that lie is truthful in our society. The flies that you put there, it shows the rotten view that the world has about this. It's all this woman, but it's decomposing because it's not real. It's all this image that we just, you know, they, 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 they tell you that they hammer into your head, you know, into your skull, boom, 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 one, two, three, four times, and then people can skip that. And it's, it's so powerful, the image, so powerful, Absolutely. that you want to look, but you don't want to look, because it makes you aware of things that you might believe that they're completely wrong. So I think that in this Women's Day, that you brought attention to the way we think we may have to be, and they're not. And we think it's the truth, even though it's a lie. But by being a lie, it's the truth. It makes you really wonder about all the preconceptions that we have about the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it really hits me because what you painted is so beautiful. And at the same time, it's such a big lie. And, 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 and there is sadness to it, but it's beautiful. Absolutely. It, it, yeah, it's just... Y blow me away. Parabéns, Magna, parabéns. Parabéns. And, obrigado. Obrigado. Mm -hmm. Seguimos por aquí con el Lord of Logos, el Señor de los He's Logos. He's a genius. Christoph Spatagel es de UK. Eh, esta obra se llama International Women's Day. Eh, como podrán ver, es eh, tinta sobre papel. Christoph es un genio, es un además. Cariño. Digamos, es un maestro en caligrafía. Él es un maestro en caligrafía. De los mejores del mundo. De así. los mejores del mundo y súper famosos. de disco, de, 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 de bandas famosas de, banda de rock. De bandas famosas de, me, de metal. De heavy metal, sí. Súper o sea, no, famoso. Tiene libros, además. Tiene citados. libros. Eh, es la segunda vez que participa en eh, Menuya General Gallery. Le mandamos un gran abrazo. Congratulations, Christoph. Mm -hmm. And when you are so happy with your participation, of course. And thanks. Thanks a lot. And, you know, I, I want to say something about Christoph because we had the pleasure to interview him. He's a very, very deep individual, yeah. and, and he really cares about social, uh, I want to say problems, but the, the, the context in which people move around social um, problems, no, I don't want to say problems, social issues. Yeah. Uh, and I know how much he cares about voicing what he thinks, and because he's, he's a master calligrapher, he expresses himself in calligraphy. But here, if you really think about it, it's International Women's Day, but it's done in this fierce, kind of gothic medieval writing. So it's going back to, you know, uh, the times of the Vikings or whatever you want to call it, you know, the, the, the times of uh, Camelot or the times of Ivanhoe or, or uh, King Arthur, you know, and, and bring that spirit of those people that actually build something out of nothing. All those women that, 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 that keep all that life together through so many hard times. That's why he uses that because that uh, writing, if you see heavy metal bands, or if you see uh, in United States motorcycles gangs, uh, not the bad gangs, but uh, not the, the, the ones that uh, like to go into the adventure and they go on the road mm -hmm. for like, I don't know, 3,000 miles. They all write with that kind of lettering yeah. because that's kind of a strong letter. And that embodies the human spirit, you know. Uh, they use it in witchcraft, those letters too, sometimes. So he's deeper, way deeper than you think. And there's a reason why there's a triangle. I mean, there's a womb of the, of, of the woman. It's, it's, you take the woman, you know, from, from the chest down, you know, and, and, and it becomes a triangle, if you know what I mean. And that's why it's International Women's Day. It's, it's awesome. 
Oh, thank you. Thanks thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks a lot. Seguimos por aquí con Yara. Yara Tonidandel de Brasil. Buen día. Buen día. Obrigado, Yara. Yara también es otra artista de Brasil que eh, participa una vez más en la galería. Fantástica obra, una fantástica fotógrafa que ha viajado por el mundo. Por todos lados. Recorrer la obra de fotográfica de Yara es eh, viajar por el mundo y, y meternos en, en las costumbres y aprender absolutamente eh, de todo sobre cada uno de sus viajes. Esta obra se llama Destinadas a Vida, es una fotografía integra el proyecto fotográfico de artistas vinculados a otro proyecto cultural de danzas. Eh, se llama este proyecto Eco Conexión, es de la compañía de danza Actitud de Garo Pava, en Brasil. Gracias, parabéns, Yara. Y Yara, eh, la fotografía, Yara es una, eh, en castellano un poquito. Ya. Yeah. Eh, me mareo a veces, camina <risas> mucho, pero este... Y ahora es una persona que para mí decir que es de Brasil eh, no sirve, por más que sea brasileña, porque ella es del mundo. Ella viaja por todos lados, sí. se fue, no sé, con África, los gorilas, África. Sí, o sea, tampoco puede decir que es humana, porque es, es tipo un chamán, ¿no? Se, se, se fue a vivir con, con cualquier bicho que uno se imagine, ella estuvo, cualquier persona estuvo, cualquier planta estuvo. Sí, fotografía, Pero aparte increíble. en los cinco continentes. Sí, 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 increíble. Eh, esta, esta fotografía que... que, que que vemos la, la, la mujer como si fuera un chamán con todos sus poderes, ¿no? Sí. Que es un poco lo que tiene cada mujer adentro para reinventarse. Eh, now I'm going to say something in English. Please. Yara. Uh, as I said before, Yara, it's not to me to say she's Brazilian, it's an understatement, because uh, she goes to every corner of the world, and I mean corner, corner, like corner, 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 okay? She went to live with uh, uh, gorillas. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's, she does everything. So she's, yeah. she's a citizen of the world. She goes and shows you uh, things that you might not think possible that you'll be able to be that close. Because she, the other thing is she doesn't take a photo like, you know, 300 feet away and zoom in. She goes there, really close to whatever she has to portray. And in this case, I mean, she's showing this woman uh, in the spirit of a shaman. And, you know, it, it's kind of the shaman of, of the tribe. And, you know, every woman is his own shaman. I mean, she has to reinvent herself every day to overcome whatever life throws at her. And uh, he has that power. You know, you stare and, you know, you kind of, you're scared of that person. You know, he has fire and he has this, this painting and he's just throwing you life without any time. It's timeless because she's taking us to maybe prehistoric times in that, in that painting. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's incredible. Maravillosa obra, parabéns. 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 Thank you, thank you, obrigado. <laughs> ya, yeah. Yara, obrigado. Seguimos por aquí yeah. con la obra de Susie Williamson, mm -hmm. eh, de United Kingdom, de UK. The Third Life es un acrílico sobre tela. Les cuento un poco de Susi, que también es la segunda vez que participa en el Dueña de Art Gallery. Susi pinta paisajes abstractos trabajando con acrílicos sobre lienzos. Entre su colección hay una serie de paisajes africanos inspirados en su trabajo y viajes a Sudán y a África. Cuando tenía veintitantos años, son paisajes imaginados que nacen del pensamiento, la memoria, la experiencia y en particular rinden homenaje a todas esas mujeres que fueron sus amigas, sus compañeras, sus alumnas. Susie, thank you so much for Susie showing again. Una, una artista realmente She's increíble, fantastic. maravillosa. Yeah. Uh, one thing about this work that I love, and I don't know if you guys felt the same thing I felt when we said the name is yeah. Desert Life. Mm -hmm. Desert. Desert Life. Desert. The desert doesn't have any colors, mm -hmm. other than the lion color in the sun. But this one is filled with colors. Why? Because it's it's a life spent in the. It could be the desert. It could be a life spent by yourself, but it's filled with memories, it's filled with dreams, if it's, it's filled with different roles that you have taken and ones you have not taken and still waiting for you. And, 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 and the fact that Susie has traveled and gone to those places uh, gives you an insight that somebody else might not have when they're painting from home or out of a photograph. That's why it's so poignant to me to be called there's life and there is, there is water and there's a tree. Uh, are those trees and water there, or they're in the imagination of a woman that's carrying a basket? And if these are the, her friends, this is the beginning of every single road 
or trail that they had to take to accomplish what they want to accomplish in life is the beginning of uh, a project or, or, or relationship or, or, or the beginning of just being outside the wall and see what the hell do I go now? Mm -hmm. You know, so it has something, it has the tenderness, which is awkward because it's so tender and so poignant that makes it really, really a work of art. Uh, you know, when somebody tells you desert, you imagine something barren. You don't imagine something this beautiful. Um, that's why it's so wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Congratulations, Susi, and thanks a lot for to be part. Seguimos por aquí con Miriam Chente. Miriam Great friend Chente, too. Otra artista muy querida por nosotros, querida. artista permanente de Mendoza. Que nos ha visitado. Y también nos ha visitado Miriam y seguramente muy pronto la tendremos por aquí. Ama Ella la, es ama, de Buenos Aires. Ama la yoga, se puede yoga nanda, todos lados. Sí, es una maestra de yoga además. Esta obra se llama Nature, Nature Looking at Us. Nature Looking at Us. Nature uh, uh, Looking at Us. Es mm -hmm. un óleo sobre papel. Eh, es una obra increíble, como todas las que Miriam nos tiene acostumbrados. Eh, Miriam, además, como les contaba, ha sido profesora eh, superior en Bellas Artes en Argentina. Tiene una carrera increíble, exhibido en muchas partes del mundo. Eh, bueno, eh, realmente un honor. Una cosa que quiero decir en castellano de Miriam. Eh, Miriam es una persona muy, muy profunda. Ella vive muy hacia adentro. Muy espiritual. Eh, ella cuando vino acá a Los Ángeles no nos dijo llevarnos a Hollywood. Nos dijo que ir a Yogananda. Eh, es muy espiritual, ha viajado por todo el mundo sí. y su trabajo es muy, muy espiritual. Muy Hay signos escondidos por todos lados, como podemos ver los dos ojitos mirando. Son esos, es la madre tierra otra vez mirando a ver qué hacemos con ella. La lastimamos, la queremos, la ignoramos, la veneramos. Todo su trabajo tiene la fuerza de lo que está escondido en el mundo. Eh, generalmente un misterio es mucho más poderoso que algo al descubierto. Entonces Miriam te deja con el misterio de, de esa naturaleza que te mira, pero vos nunca la ves que te está mirando. Eh, es, es algo para remarcar, porque es un poco la, la forma en que vive ella. Todo va por dentro. Totalmente. Y como decía Hemingway, la, la, la persona sabia vive más por dentro que por fuera. Eh, un placer, Miriam. Eh, muy contentos. Y me gustaría... I want to say that in English, about me. Oh, yeah, please. I want to say... The don't let me talk here. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> Miriam. Uh, Miriam is a very, very deep person. I mean, she, she embraces everything that has to do with soul searching and growing. Uh, in this painting, you can see that it's nature looking at us, and you see the two eyes. And, you know, it's nature asking, are you going to hurt me? Are you going to acknowledge me? Are you going to neglect me? Are you going to look at me for what I am? I know what you want me to be, just some resource that gives you some money. Um, every single secret in life is more powerful than something that is out in the open. And that's the great strength of Miriam. Miriam gives you a hint, but doesn't allow you to see what's behind. That's for you to discover within you. And Miriam is a person that, as Hemingway said, you know, you become wise because you live inwardly and not outwardly. So that's why it's so powerful, her work, and that's why it, keep, it keeps you wondering uh, what is it in it. It's up to you to discover. Absolutely. Felicitaciones, Miriam, y muchísimas gracias por ser parte. Sí. Y quería contarles un poquito cómo seguimos. Bueno, esto que puse ahora, mira, es un poco una sorpresa para todos. Estamos, son los 34 artistas los que nombramos en el día uh -huh. de hoy. Eh, Hice un, una pequeña, el, el final de Image de John Lennon. Imagine. De, 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 sí, eh, Imagina, de John Lennon. Y que él decía, quizás digan que soy un soñador, pero no soy el único. Espero que algún día te unas a nosotros. El mundo en el que vivimos puede ser uno, uno solo. So we finish, we close with John Lennon's famous words that everybody knows, you know. You might say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will leave us one. Which is, we had to overcome, you know, countries and faith and just be one. Faith. Yeah, and be one with everybody. Uh -huh. and, and that's all it is. Thank you so much. Muchísimas gracias. Uh, for putting up. Para ver. Yeah, but for putting, putting up with us. Uh -huh. And uh, sometimes with my accent too. 
And uh, thank you. I know it took two hours. It's really long. Yeah. And really uh, it's a small screen, and you know we're uh, way, but in in a sense we're all interconnected and uh, we're all part of of this wonderful idea, which now has a life of its own. Y queremos contarles que vamos a seguir, por supuesto, durante todo el mes de marzo compartiendo más material de cada uno de nuestros mm -hmm. artistas, de los 34 artistas que se sumaron. Eh, como decía muy bien Jorge, en agradecimiento a Arte Global, a In Gallery, a Gravura Gallery, Gravura Gallery eh, Mundial, Academy. Mundial a la Academia, tantos que han eh, trabajado arduamente para eh, que este International Woman Day sea lo que es hoy. Y el 28, además de que vamos a estar, eh, por supuesto, como les decía, compartiendo más material, videos de cada uno de los artistas. Los the 28. Yeah. What, what? El 28. Vamos a estar anunciando al ganador de esta exposición. Ah, on the 28th, yeah, it's very we'll announce the winner. Even though, you know, there are no winners, but anyway, I don't want to sound Tenemos cliché. Tenemos que but... nombrar a alguien para yeah. que, bueno, eh, tenga una exhibición individual, virtual en la galería. Yeah, and you know, it's to close all this, um, we have to remember that if one thing this date reminds me, is that we have to respect...